Thomas Payne. Thomas Payne. Thomas Payne. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. These words from former President of the United States, Dwight D. Eisenhower, are very fitting for this Christmas season. May the turbulence of our age yield to a true time of peace, when men and nations shall share a life that honors the dignity of each, the brotherhood of all. Amen. Good morning, here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Come on, patriots, call in. Good morning. Oh, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm Zeb Bell, Zeb at the Ranch, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And get ready for wintertime driving. You better believe it. Also, we'd like to say thank you to some of our great advertisers, like Western Way Services, always at your uh, disposal. <laughs> Call them at 734-6969. And right now, let's go to the phone line and have our pledge of allegiance good morning good morning sir hey go ahead buddy i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all amen call me back a little later i'm surprised you're up but i appreciate it good morning doug take care <laughs> Hey, we got to go to the weather forecast real quick. And the weather brought to you by KNR Rental at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn on the Burley Paul Highway. The number to call, 678-3122. Yeah, they're there. They are there. They got there early in the morning driving through the fog and all the yuck out there to get there to serve you with the best tools and equipment and uh, to help you finish the project that you're working on or the construction work, whatever. And they've got all the top name brands ready to serve you at K and R Rental Roger and the crew on the Burley Paul Highway 6783122 right now here's Gina with the weather Foggy, foggy, and then a little bit more fog. Good morning for your Zeb at the Ranch weather forecast. Scotty Cameron sitting in for Gina Jameson. Yes, that fog trend is going to continue. Looking for areas of freezing fog this morning. Highs around 34 tonight. Again, areas of freezing fog expecting a low of 17. Then for Wednesday, freezing fog again. AZ in the afternoon expecting a high around 33. Then for Wednesday night, yep, again, I sound like a broken record. Areas of freezing fog expecting a low around 19 for Thursday. Freezing fog and haze in 38. Again, the same thing for Thursday night with a low of 23. That's your 7th Ranch weather forecast. Scotty Cameron sitting in for Gina James. Ah, Scotty, that a boy. That a boy. Good job. Brought to you by KNR Rental. And feel free to contact them today for more information about all their available tools and equipment. They are ready to serve you. You bet you right there on the Burley Paul Highway. 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. KNR Rental. And the telephone number is 678-3122. Thursday, of course, sale day. The regular sale day for the Burley Livestock Commission Yard. And, oh, by the way, they had a ripping good stock cow sale yesterday. Woo, yeah. Burley Livestock Yard at the 1100 Occidental Avenue address in Burley. Number to call for cattle consignments and sale information, 678-9411. The sale that works for you. Merv May, 
Cade Roggy, Lance Udy, all of these great folks at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard. You don't forget, Thursday is sale day, starting at 10 a.m. And also, real quick, I want to remind everybody about Daryl's Cleaners. You know, I just absolutely love the way they they take my clothes, and they're all rumply and crumply and everything. And then I go back in and get them, and wow, they look brand spanking new. That is really something, and I appreciate what they do. I've worked with a lot of cleaners all over the United States, for that matter, being on the road all those years, and I always came home to the best in service, the best in what they do at Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. You stop in and see those good folks today. Wow, we've got a full plate, <clears throat> excuse me, a full plate here this morning of things uh, that should be very interesting. We're going to be talking to uh, Al Parada, and he's going to be on at 9.06 this morning. And I'm looking forward to having him on the air. He writes for the stream. And then at 9.30, we've got David Shostakis coming on the air. And then Dr. History. And then at 10.32, Michael Crabtree. So we've got a really good stable of people coming on this morning. Uh, let's see. Oh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Wow. You've got to be impressed. I am with this lady in the way that she handles herself as the White House press secretary and the way that she conducts the press meetings and questions every day. And she is not a woman that is going to sit back and be run over by any of the calloused, very rude media. And I got to tell you that uh, I'm going to try to send her an email. I really am. I want to tell her how much I appreciate the way that she conducts herself, even through the adversity and stupidity of people like Chelsea Handler and other liberal Democrats that are out just doing nothing, trying to derail what she does and defame her. And yesterday, I thought it was great when they were talking about fake news at that news conference yesterday. And she just basically, she was holding court. It was Judge Roy Bean in the Old West, and Sarah was Judge Roy Bean. And a couple of these guys, they really got kind of out of line and started interrupting her and trying to talk over. And she says, wait a minute. I'm not finished. You wait till I'm done. I liked it. Kind of reminded me of my grade school teacher, Mrs. Kiltz. Don't interrupt me. I'm not finished. I'm not done. I love that. Calls welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. I told you. I told you over a month ago. Yeah, I said the weather was going to get chilly, and you were going to put your toesies out on the floor, and you were going to go, ooh, wow, it's chilly in this house. Well, your furnace probably isn't working efficiently because you didn't go get those new furnace filters. Yeah, well, they've got them all at Ramsey Heating and Electric. All you have to do is stop down there, pick them up. You can get one or a dozen, and they've got all your heating and electrical needs, and, oh, they can help keep you warm. So you be sure and stop over there today. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Open 730 to 5, Monday through Friday. Ramsey Heating and Electric. They've been over a half century serving you. Uh, You know where we're going to be on Thursday. If you don't know, I certainly hope you can make time on your schedule to be there at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner. And I urge you to be a part of our great big Christmas party that's going on at Denny's. We're going to be broadcasting from 8 to 11 there. Door prizes, Santa Claus, and Dusty Fisher and his uh, Burley High School Choir and Junior High Choir. They're going to be singing Christmas carols right there inside 
inside of Denny's. It's going to be phenomenal. And you can register, and you can do it today. You can do it tomorrow. You can do it Thursday. You can register. Uh, all you have to do is sign your name to your meal ticket and your telephone number, and you might win a beautiful Flex Steel Men's Recliner from Lee's Furniture Floors and More, Jeff and the crew at 459 Overland and Burley, teaming up to help us with our Denny's annual Christmas party. It's going to be fun. Great food. Great people. Always, always at America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant. Don't you miss it. Now, I noticed yesterday that we were a little down on phone calls. I think the fog came into play on that. And a lot of people, "Ah, well, I don't feel good. Well, I'm not happy. Look at it. It's so foggy and nasty outside. Well, give me a call. I'd love to hear from you at 436-224-1866-927-4587. You must feel that we're on the verge of an apocalypse when you hear from the noted statesman, Dennis Rodman. (laughs) Dennis Rodman, the guy that ran out of skin to put all of his tattoos on. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, Dennis Rodman is, uh, you know, he's been kind of chummy with the little fat boy over in North Korea, Kim Jong-un. And they supposedly have a great friendship. Uh Uh-huh. Well, Dennis Rodman has come out and said he knows. Dennis Rodman knows what Kim Jong-un of North Korea wants. And all Donald Trump has to do as our president is call Dennis Rodman on the phone. And Dennis will share with him what Kim Jong-un wants. And Dennis will negotiate a proper peace between the two countries. Doesn't that make you feel warm and fuzzy all over? <laughs> it doesn't mean it doesn't mean no way. I don't want can you imagine as an ambassador to North Korea, Dennis Rodman? <laughs> With the rings in his ears and his nose and everything and on his lips, I have we got that far down the totem pole? Holy cow. Hey, give me a call, four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. Don't forget Keelix supplements. Hold on, I'm losing my voice for a minute. I'm back. Keelix supplements, a very important supplement of vitamins, minerals for your livestock. And believe me, they, the Keelix supplements, can help maintain proper function of the reproduction systems, digestive systems, and nervous systems. They come in a variety of formulas with chelated minerals for better absorption. All you need to do to find out more how your livestock can benefit, whether you've got beef, cattle, dairy, cattle, horses, sheep, goats, whatever, call Scott Mitten. 435-230-1175. That number again, 435-230-1175. Key Lick Supplements, a very important supplement of vitamins and minerals for your livestock. Also, a big thank you this morning to Pomerel Place. They've been with us for quite some time on this program, and we really appreciate them. And I, one thing that bothers me and scares me is I know a lot of seniors that are living alone at home, and it might be a great big two-story home, and they're going up and down the stairs, they're staying alone, they're not eating properly, maybe they're not taking all their medication. Well, you know what, maybe they should be kind of coerced a little bit to checking on Pomerel Place, a place for senior living at 1301 Bennett Street in Burley. The number to call six seven seven eight two one two. Pomerel Place with Senior Living offers the ability for seniors to maintain their independence both safely and comfortably. Please get a hold of them today. Six seven seven eight two one two. A Pomerel Place, a place for senior living. Nice people too. All right, your turn. Give me a call. 436. Where in the world are you folks out there this morning? Hey, wait a minute. I'll wake you up with this bells. Hold on. Rise and shine. Give me a call. 436-224-1866-927-4587. I saw and heard about a story at UC Berkeley 
And I didn't want to believe it because it just shows that we even go lower down into the cesspool. There are lowlifes and worthless people wherever you go, and they're always involved in certain projects. Some of these low lives or lower lives and uh, cesspool dwellers are at UC Berkeley. And I, I just couldn't believe, <clears throat> excuse me, there was an organization, the Berkeley College Republicans, that wanted to hold a candlelight vigil for the life of Kate Steinle. And all that vigil did was create hate, animosity, and despair. It is unbelievable to me that someone or groups of someones would go to where they had the candlelight vigil and the pictures of Kate Steinle as a remembrance and the candles and everything and totally destroy it rip up the pictures of Kate Steinle and think with their pea-sized brain that they were doing something good? And I I followed this story, and I had some stories printed out this morning, that uh, some of the people that were against the uh, absolute vigil for Kate Steinle, a guy by the... or Raphael Caderas is a member of the Refuse Fascism. It's a great college club, isn't it? Uh, condemned the uh, Berkeley College Republicans for politicizing Steinle's death. And then he made this quote, and listen to these words very carefully. These people don't care about Kate Steinle. They are using the tragic death of Kate Steinle to incite hatred and bigotry against immigrants. See, this is where these people show a lack of intelligence. And I would say and hail the fact that Rafael Caderas is not a very bright person. When he said, they are using, meaning the Republicans and the conservatives that wanted to have this candlelight vigil, they are using the tragic death of Kate Steinle to incite hatred and bigotry against immigrants. Immigrants is not the right word. Illegal aliens. It was an illegal alien here illegally that had been deported on numerous times and had committed various and sundry of crimes against our country and the people in this country, and he came back, got a gun, and whether it was accidental, a ricochet, or whatever, fired the pistol, and the bullets killed Kate Steinle. He was here illegally. It wasn't an immigrant. I don't think anybody has hatred and bigotry against immigrants that come here legally. I don't. But when you start calling people that are breaking the law to get in here, have broken the law while they're here, and repeatedly come back and cause more problems, those are not immigrants, and yes, I have hatred and bigotry against them. This is insane. This is absolutely insane that the left would destroy a nice candlelight vigil for a beautiful young woman and then say that they were only doing it to incite hatred and bigotry against immigrants. Absolutely insane. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Oh, yes. Uh, Another call came in yesterday right after the program on my cell phone, and this person said, I heard you do that ad for that septic service. What's their number? And I says, here it is. Dino Septic Service over in Rupert. And the number to call, 436-6526, or in Burley, 678-1638. Fast, fair, friendly. Friendly service, they got a smile on their face when they're serving you, and they're doing a job you and I don't want to do. 
septic tanks pumped and septic tanks and drain fields installed, sewer and sink drain lines cleaned, liquid waste removal. Oh, I don't want to do it. They do it, and they do it so well. Dino's Septic Service in Rupert. Absolutely the best you get a hold of them today. Good, good people. All right, give me a call, 436-224-4186-927-4587. Wheels, how are we coming in? I'm hearing some popping on the line. Is everything okay? Everything sounds fine on my end. All right, you got your headsets on? I do. Oh, well, good boy. What are you eating over there? I can hear you chewing. Well, um, I usually have like a pop tart now. Yeah, um, I'm trying to get my immune system up to fight off uh, some of the bugs and everything. And pop tarts do that? Well, no. Hold up. Um, I am actually also drinking a Top Care uh, Nutrisure. It's uh-huh. kind of like a, a protein milkshake. Okay. It has all your vitamin D okay. and your C and uh, stuff like that in it. So. Uh, that's kind of my breakfast. That's I can tell you coffee, this. But... I can tell you this, young man, that when I was in college, because of very limited resources, i.e. money, I lived all my college years on Pop-Tarts and Campbell's Pork and Beans. <laughs> hey, that, that doesn't sound too bad, though. I've, I've kind of came to the realization that once I move out on my own, um, I'm probably going to end up eating ramen noodles. <laughs> okay, <laughs> buy a bunch now. Put them in storage, buddy. Hey, don't forget. Costco and buy them in bulk. There you go. Don't forget Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Yes, the number to call. They can help you get back to being you. 678-1191, the number to call. And Nick Greenwell and all the physical therapists there, they really know what to do with all the different exercises to help you and they've got the hydrotherapy pool, the only pool of its kind around here. I've walked a million miles in that thing. I'll tell you what, they can really, really help you. And the cold weather means you've got to watch out for the ice and falls. Hey, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. They are there to serve you at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, 678-1191. Wow, I uh, I guess maybe uh, some of the folks are sleeping in this morning. I'm uh, surprised. Good morning to you. Give me a call, 436-224-1866-927-4587. I'd like to hear from you folks. Um, while I have just a moment here, I want to give some Christmas messages. And I want to say Merry Christmas from the following. we got so many businesses that wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas. Uh, Magic Valley Carpet at 613 D Street in Rupert. Oh, my goodness. Company coming. Need a new carpet? They can help. Better call them right now today, 436-1722. Absolutely great, great people over at Magic Valley Carpet in Rupert. Merry Christmas. And Butte Irrigation at 116 South, 600 West of Paul. Also at Red Cap Corner on Kimberly Road in Kimberly. Your Zomatic dealer for all your irrigation needs. They'll get you wet. And don't forget, they wish you a Merry Christmas from Butte Irrigation, as do the folks at Streamline Precision. 120 South, 100 West of Burley with my buddy Tim and the crew. They can do it all. Manufacturing, material handling, uh, the building of buildings, commodity mixing, everything. Tim and the crew at Streamline Precision in Burley, 678-9204, wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Caller, good morning. Ho, ho, ho. How are you? Good morning, sir, and Merry Christmas to everybody. Yes, sir. Hey, the bomber in New York where several people are saying that he come in on the chain migration. Yep. I was watching KMBT last night. I... You know, like it for a little bit of the local news and the weather. And they had a story on it. And their statement was he was here on a work visa. No. No. That's not right. He came in through chain migration uh, with his family. And I'm going to stand behind that. I think I I understand that I am 100% correct on that. I am, too. I think everybody needs to get a hold of KMBT and say, hey, you guys going to tell us the news. 
Tell us all the news. Don't pick and choose the words you're going to use. I can. I've got a. I've got a letter right here. I just found it while you were talking, Doug, and I'm going to read this to everybody so they understand it. The terror suspect who allegedly attempted to detonate a suicide bomb in New York came to the United States from Bangladesh as a chain migration relative of an individual who had migrated and immigrated earlier into the United States. What more do I have to say? Exactly. That's exactly it. And it frustrates me that these news, like, well, CNN and MSNBC and all of them, seem to think that they can tell us what they want us to hear, and we're supposed to take it as gospel, when basically they're trying to lead us all astray and brainwash us. Well, I don't know what KMVT thought they were saying when they promoted that story and said what they said about how he got here. But the young man came here as a relative, and it's kind of like somebody in his family won the lottery. And you realize that you can have a family of 50, and you can kind of join hands and link, like in a chain theory, and come here as part of the 50? This is insane. It's got to stop. It's got to end. And since 2005, so I can tell you that I do know what I'm talking about. 141,500 Bangladeshi people have come here through chain migration, and we've got to find out more about who they are. Exactly. That's exactly it. I mean, the government is, there's a lot of people in the government. Now, there's some of them up there that do a good job that fight for justice and for the American people, but there's a lot of them up there that the only thing they're fighting for is their pocketbook and the thinking that they're going to be in the hierarchy when this country goes down and they be- and they become the dictator. Yeah. I don't know where the information was provided for that false and erroneous news story that they carried, but I can tell you that uh, this guy, Akied Ula, a 27-year-old Bangladesh national, uh, under chain migration, new immigrants to the United States are allowed to bring an unlimited, listen to this, an unlimited number of poorly screened foreign relatives with them, creating a never-ending flow of immigration from some terror-ridden countries. I mean, what more do you need to know? Exactly. Exactly it. And he just snuck in under the wire. He wasn't quite 21, so that's why they let him in. And I think he was a nephew or a great-nephew of the family bringing him in. Yeah, and he'd been back to Bangladesh and the Middle East five times. He had a good job here in this country, and was making money and everything else. And here's another aspect of this story, and I'm not going to pull any punches. The family, which evidently is a very big family, they expressed outrage yesterday. Remember that word, outrage. They expressed outrage by the actions of law enforcement. You know what, Doug? I know what they did. The FBI, the NYPD, Homeland Security, and everybody, once they found out where the guy lived, they absolutely, with no time lost, went to the residence. They wanted to make sure that all the evidence was intact, any cell phones, any computer messages, whatever, and they went in and took over. And, oh, my heart does not break for the family being issued out of the house before any evidence could be uh, be disgusted or displayed or thrown away i i just really get upset when people say oh the poor family i know it i know it do you they had to know something was going on oh for crying out loud doug you you can't tell me that a 27 year old still living as basically a lone wolf within his family and uh, not married and everything else that they didn't know that there was something up with this guy taking five trips back to bangladesh and becoming radicalized or whatever i mean come on exactly i think we need to have chain deportation we'll keep the families together there you go gather them all up if they try to do like this bomber did Gather all the family that come up that brought him in on the chain migration, every one of them, send them back and say, okay, you're done, you can't come back anymore. Yeah, but one of the Muslim groups in New York City and uh, Albert Fox Khan, one of the legal directors, said that the allegations being made against a member of our family are just really heartbreaking. Allegations? allegations the guy was laying on the floor with his belly burned he got caught red belly didn't he i would say (laughs) thanks doug hey everybody
everybody. Let's do what we can for seniors. I mean, it's a cold time of the year. Let's help them with Meals on Wheels. Let's donate to them if you can. If you've got an extra beef that you can't use, they sure can use it. Anything, potatoes uh, or whatever you can donate. No, uh, Doug, you're a good spokesman. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. God bless you. God bless you, man. Hey, don't forget the Urgent Cares. I'm running a little bit late. Uh, I want to tell everybody about the Urgent Cares. What a great job they do in this area. Oh, my goodness. Riverview Urgent Care at 382 North Overland and Burley. And then we have Urgent Care of Jerome at 133 West Avenue A. And Urgent Care of Twin Falls, 2392 Addison Avenue East in Twin. Oh, my goodness. You got some aches and pains, some injuries? Hey. They can help. They will help. And you get treated, not seated. No appointment necessary. They're open seven days a week with extended hours. And always a qualified provider on staff. I'm telling you, they can save you money. They will save you money. Please get a hold of them today. And remember, they are the best. The urgent cares in this area, Riverview Urgent Care in Burley, Urgent Care of Jerome, and Urgent Care of Twin Falls. Remember that. Great people, saving you money on your health care at the Urgent Cares. All right, give me a call, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Caller, I'm going to ask you to just bear with me one 30-second period here. I've got to get this in, and I'll be right with you and give you plenty of time, I promise. Barry Equipment and Rental, and, of course, you know where they're located, South Lincoln and Jerome, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. Always the best of sales, service, and parts. Equipment. Equipment rentals, absolutely, with retail equipment sales. They've got all the equipment to get the job done right. Please get a hold of them today. Don't forget right there at that Burley location, big sandbox right out behind so they can teach you how to run the equipment. Barry Equipment and Rental. Jerome, Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. Good morning. Yes. You know, the multiplication factor is going to kill us all off. And in a short period of time, we're all going to be strangers in our own country. We won't be able to walk the streets anymore because we are going to be outnumbered by the foreigners that are pouring into this country. Yeah. We've looked up, looked at, looked down at. We're going to be criticized for being Americans. Well, you know, here's something that bothered me with that bombing in New York. Yes, I'm so thankful that it was a botched bombing. But uh, there were stories that uh, said that this guy, this uh, Ikayad Allah, he got mad because he saw all the Christmas posters and the sights of Christmas, and he hated the West, and he had been over to his homeland five times to become radicalized, evidently. And are we going to have to hide our Christianity? Are we going to have to hide the nativity scenes? Are we going to have to hide the bright lights and the festive occasion of Christmas just for the fear that it might upset one of these that we shouldn't have in this country in the first place? Well, we are going to have to set the example. Now, you get a guy like this, we don't know too much about him. Uh, He needs to be turned over to the CIA, waterboarded, gotten all the information out of him, and then have a public execution. And it's going to take something radical like this to put a stop to what's going on at all our universities and uh, by these left-wing professors we've got. Yeah, and I know that... uh... Something radical, they're going to walk all over us in 10 or 20 years. This, This country is gone. Yeah, I know Donald Trump is calling for the death penalty for anyone that tries to commit the atrocity of a terror event here in this country, and I think he's right. I think it should be absolutely mandatory on the chart that you're going to receive the death penalty if you are found absolutely guilty. Bingo! Turn on the heat, turn on the electricity, and fry them. I am not going to mamby-pamby these people. I don't want them here. I don't want the fear of having them here. And I'm sick and tired of these bleeding-heart liberals saying, Oh, well, we've got to love them. Well, we don't need to drag these guys through the courts for ten years. No. 
They've been caught doing something to kill our American people. It's going to be instant execution. You know, what I would like to do... Otherwise, uh, these (coughs) politicians that are so soft and so caring about these invaders that are coming to our country, nothing's going to happen. You know, here's what I'd like to do, and I think you would like to help me do this. Let's you and I buy a plane ticket and go back to New York City today, and then let's go shopping. Let's you and I buy like, oh, maybe 10 or 11,000 Christmas light strands and all the nativity scenes and have a singing Santa Claus running on a battery. And let's go decorate this guy's room, Akayad Allah, and really let him see the festive Christmas spirit. That would only make it even more disgusted with the United States. Well, gee, Tony, I'm... It's anything, anything we ever do to try to improve the life of people in our country. They want to destroy it. Now, I'm not trying to improve his life. If he hates it so bad, I want to make his life miserable. Well, we got to go back to waterboarding. All right. That's it. All right, Tony. God bless you, man. The Thanks. The of uh, uh, terrorism against our uh, country gets all the information out, and then you execute him. I couldn't agree more. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Oh, my. I tell you what, There's. it, it always comes out this way. It, it always, in every story, that there's going to be a group of the left that are going to kind of look at the camera, and they're going to go, oh, well, we've got to feel more compassion. No, I don't feel any compassion. None. <laughs> None. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, this guy, without a shadow of a doubt, tried to hurt, maim, kill, and bomb, and destroy, and fortunately it backfired, but I think that he should absolutely get the death penalty and throw the switch. Oh, but the bleeding heart liberals. Yeah, but look, they walked into his parents' home, and they made them stand out in the cold. They were looking for any and all of the evidence that there are ties to other sources and what they did is the way it should be done and i'm not going to kowtow to the bleeding heart liberals saying oh that poor family baloney caught myself uh don't forget that we're going to be over on thursday morning at denny's for their annual christmas party it's going to be from 8 to 11 right on my program broadcasting live and direct over their door prizes santa claus great choirs oh my they're going to add to the occasion with christmas and you can register for that beautiful beautiful flex steel men's recliner provided by lee's furniture photos and more at 459 overland and burley thank you jeff thank you thomas thank you everybody for making this just a jam up great merry christmas from denny's restaurant america's diner 611 north overland and burley zeb at the ranch over there on thursday morning don't you miss it. Wow. Calls welcome 436 227 4587 I got another little story that just really, I guess it just makes me so mad that people, groups of people like this insidious, hateful group called the Freedom From Religion, bunch of kooks and crackpots, Basically from my old home state of Wisconsin. Yeah, that's where their headquarters is. Nut jobs. Uh, They came out against, now listen to this. They came out against a Connecticut senator. Oh my goodness, did they blast this guy. And the reason they're so down on him is that because every year at Christmas time for the last few years... He has helped the Salvation Army get a lot of funding for warm coats and warm clothing for those in the community that just don't have the money. I am not kidding you. The freedom from religion jackasses have come out and they are denigrating this guy. They're doing all they can to stop him from helping the Salvation Army under the headline of separation of church and state. Well, first of all, that's a ridiculous headline. 
and ridiculous platform to try to stand on. It'll tip over. And second of all, my heartfelt thanks to this man that has the guts to look at the people with the so-called freedom from religion and say, take a hike. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep helping the people that just absolutely are hurting for something or some coat or warm pair of socks this Christmas season. He's going to keep on helping. Caller, go ahead quickly. You're on the air. Mr. Bell, good morning. Yes, sir. This is the same group that made us take uh, the uh, Merry Christmas scene and the uh, manger scene off the Rupert Post Office two years ago. Yep. Uh, It's the same bunch. uh, And last year, the post office just had a very... uh, minimal amount on it and this year they got absolutely nothing so in essence what they've done is they've won yeah. and if you go around the Rupert Square you don't see Merry Christmas anywhere but you do see Happy Holidays believe and see the life and, and that's so cowardice that's what they've done is they've won yeah, and D- Gary, that is cowardice. That is nothing more than being a milk toast, spineless coward when you count out of these people and their threats. You, you, you absolutely are opening the door up for more of their garbage. People need to stand up and remember one thing. It's Christmas time. It's the birth of Jesus Christ. If you don't like it, you don't want to be a part of it, that's fine. But don't you dare tell me I can't be. Well, they have, and they are, and they are also that same group of people, maybe not that same uh, the same title, but that same mentality is the one that tried to keep us from having our fallen soldiers' monuments uh, yes. with the flag flying at half staff, honoring all of the military veterans yes. of Idaho. You know, so when are we going to... That mentality on many different levels, around, right around here in our own neighbors. Gary, when are we going to get a backbone again? When are we going to grow up, stand up, be proud, stick our chin out, and if anybody gets in our way, we're not going to go around them. We're going to step over them. It's about time we started to get tough again. Well, we should have started back in 2000, but it isn't happening, and the Tea Party had a, a little bit of hope that that's fallen by the wayside, and now uh, Donald Trump is uh, trying his best, but you know now with the sex scandals, they're probably going to drag him down, so I don't know if we ever go back. It's uh, quite distressing. Yeah, and I got to tell you, my blood pressure went up about thirty points uh, talking about this well, because I, I am. Well, I'm going to help you with that. So, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and a Merry Christmas to you, my dear friend. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Gary's a great guy. I got Caller number two, don't go away. I've got to get a weather in or I'm going to run out of time and then I'm going to get in trouble. I'll be right with you. Don't hang up. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids with Dr. Christine Pickup, doctor of audiology right behind the Minidoka Hospital across from the emergency room. Number to call for an appointment for a hearing screening so you can enjoy all the Christmas happenings and all the Christmas carols and everything. 312-0957. 312-0957. Filling in for Gina, here's Scotty. Foggy, foggy, and then a little bit more fog. Good morning for your 7th Ranch weather forecast. Scotty Cameron sitting in for Gina Jameson. Yes, that fog trend is going to continue. Looking for areas of freezing fog this morning. Highs around 34 tonight. Again, areas of freezing fog expecting a low of 17. Then for Wednesday, freezing fog again. Hazy in the afternoon expecting a high around 33. Then for Wednesday night, yep, again, I sound like a broken record. Areas of freezing fog expecting a low around 19 for Thursday. Freezing fog and haze in 38. Again, the same thing for Thursday night with a low of 23. That's your 7th Ranch weather forecast. Scotty Cameron sitting in for Gina J. Oh, Scotty, great job this morning. Thank you. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids with Dr. Christine Pickup. Oh, my goodness. She knows all about sound, all about hearing. Boy, I mean. And she's got a great staff over there serving you. And they wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, 312-0957. Caller, thank you. You're on the air. Yeah, how are you doing this morning, Zeb? Good, thank you. You bet. Well, hey, what I was going to do is add my two cents on the what we're talking about, and uh, I don't care what other people think whatsoever. If I, want, if I see something that needs to be done, 
that uh, somebody is a little down and not having uh, as good a luck or blessings as we do, for me to go out there and do something nice for them, to give them, whether it's food, whether it's money, get to do something for them, and if somebody else don't like it, that's just tough, you know what. I couldn't agree more. And, you know, this senator from Connecticut, absolutely, I say God's blessings to him for taking the time and the effort and his own personal resources to help raise more funding for the people that just don't have the money. I say God bless him. And, honestly, I'd like to be standing with him when some of those kooks and crackpots and jackasses from that Freedom From Religion organization try to go face-to-face with him. Yeah. You know, I would love to know what planet those libtards come from. Okay. <laughs> hey, Merry Christmas to you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. All right, Merry sir. Merry Christmas to you. God bless you, man. And that's another God thing. I will God. never, ever stop saying Merry Christmas. I will never, ever stop celebrating Christmas. I will never, ever uh, stop putting up my nativity scenes, of which I must have about 30 up around the house and outside and everything. Not going to do it. And I'm not going to kowtow to any group that says, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. Bet me. Uh, oh, I've got to tell you, too, and calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Certified Pest Control, Kevin and the crew. Oh, man, you got pests. <laughs> well, I'm not talking about the freedom from religion, folks. Well, they, they are pests, but I don't know if Kevin can get rid of them or not. Anyway, uh, you talk about mice and voles and all that. Pesky pests. Well, they're a nasty part of life, but they can take care of them. They can get rid of them. We've seen them in action. Certified Pest Control, absolutely the best. Call, find out more, 312-8577. Wonderful people, Kevin and the crew, wishing you and yours a very Merry Christmas. Don't forget that. Um, all right, I got time for another call. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. On kind of a little bit of a personal note... Wow. The National Finals Rodeo is going on right now in Las Vegas. And uh, they're into the last five rounds. And when you stop and think about it, if you follow it at all, whether you like rodeo or whether you don't, the money has shot through the roof. I was a major part of the National Finals Rodeos in the 80s and in the 90s. And quite frankly, made good money, really good money. And now it has gone to the point where, holy cow, how far is up? And another event that's going on right now as we speak in Las Vegas, in conjunction with that National Finals Rodeo, is the World Series Finals in the team roping. And you talk about big bucks, and it's hard to even fathom this. But last, you know, the team roping is divided so that it's a fairness situation on a number basis. You know, like if you're a four and you rope with another four, maybe you can rope in the eight or you can upgrade and go up into the ten or whatever you want to. But it's kind of a fairness doctrine, if you will, set up on a number system. Well, last year, just to tell you what kind of money these guys are roping for right now, The winning team last year in the number 10 at the World Series in Las Vegas won $348,000. I got to wrap my mind around that a little bit. You can buy a lot of diesel. You can get some nice new pads for the horses with $348,000. Big, big money. My son-in-law is down there right now. And uh, they ended up uh, fourth in the consolation bracket, I think, yesterday for uh, five grand apiece. And he's still got another steer tomorrow in the number, let's see, the number 11 and the number 10. So we're seeing... What's going to happen with Nick and his brother Logan? I hope they come home with a bunch of big bucks. Hey, let's also remind you about what's going on with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Mm-mm. Seven locations serving you. And I'd like to urge you to remember that you better get ready for wintertime driving. 
Absolutely. They've got all the tires, all the tread designs. They've got all the tire chains. And they got the knowledge to tell you what would fit best, work best, drive best on your vehicle. So stop in and see them today, along with the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries, the whole nine yard bull batteries. Very important on these cold winter mornings. So check it out with Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. Yup, yup. The best, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Coming up next, uh, our Al Parada with the stream, and then David Shastaskis. Boy, I got some easy names to say, don't I, for this next hour? And then Dr. History will be here in the studio at 10.06. And then at 10.32 this morning, Michael Crabtree. Don't forget the birthday and anniversary dinner. For the uh, Senior Junction Senior Center is not going to be on Wednesday. No, it's not going to be on Wednesday. It is going to be this Thursday, the birthday and anniversary dinner. Not this Wednesday, but Thursday. Write that down. Dennis Babbitt gave me a call a little bit earlier this morning, and that's, of course, at the Senior Junction on Overland in Burley. Don't you forget that. Got to run to the news. I'll be back in about seven minutes. Don't go away. Wheels, take it away, buddy. And a good morning, good morning on another great day here in the Magic Valley. If you like a lot of fog, a lot of cold, and everything else. I'm Zeb Bell, and of course, Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, and some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River. And, of course, Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Don't forget, they can get you on the route service, and once a week, come by, get your garbage. It's gone. It's out of there. Wave goodbye. They do a great job. Western Way Services, the number to call and find out more, 734-6969. It's true. They are always at your disposal. Western Way Services, the best. By the way, too, I want to say thank you very much for another year working with our dear friends over at Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with Joel Heward, his family, and his staff. Wonderful people that have very flexible hours that are always there to serve you and your family. When there's the passing of a loved one, rest assured, they will be there to help you. All you need to do is just call the number 436-5636. Always with the highest ethical standards, with unquestioned integrity. Remember the number 436-5636, Hanson Mortuary in Rupert. Well, I know this gentleman's got an abbreviated time with us, so we want to get right to it, and we're going to say good morning to a man that has, I don't think in the past, been here with us, but we'll say good morning and Merry Christmas right now to Al Parada with the stream. Good morning, Al. How are you? Good morning. Merry Christmas. And the very same right back at you, my friend. Thank you. Um, what about today is a big day in Alabama, and to be quite honest with you, I'm not choosing sides because I don't know all the facts, I don't know all the proof, but it doesn't look like this is really going to be a shining moment for either the Democrats or the Republicans. Tell me what your thoughts are. Well, no matter what happens, it, um, no one looks good. Uh, no one looks good in this. But um, it, it, I do believe that I think at the end of the day that uh, Alabama will stick, you know, keep keep with uh, keep with uh, Mr. Moore. I think they will stick with him, I, um, and just let the chips fall where they may. Sort of that idea that, well, if he's guilty of this stuff, God or the Senate will take care of him later. But at least we'll, they won't have a Democrat, you know, in the in the, in the Senate taking a seat that belongs to them. 
So. No, let me ask you, you wrote a very interesting piece, and I thought it was very well done. Roy Moore, Les Franken, and even more to come. Uh, and I love your opening line. Remember when special elections were nothing special, when they drew about as much attention as a Cleveland Brown highlight reel? Woo, you really knifed the Browns in the back there. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the Browns fans. Um, but the point is, usually these things are dull, and uh, this one is just that. Because the fight for the nation's soul is so intense right now that this battle, this thing has become much bigger than just one guy against one guy. It's basically, okay, are we going to, tr- are we going to put in somebody who will help support the Trump agenda, or is it going to be somebody who will work day and night to stop it? And so it becomes a bigger deal than, than just like local, a local scuffle or a local replacement of a, somebody. Somebody retires and they replace them, or in this case, you know, Sessions was appointed and he had to be replaced. Usually these things are dull. Nobody cares. This one, there's so much on the line, ultimately, that everybody's paying attention to it. Well, let me ask you this, Al. I've done a little research on this over the last couple of weeks, and when it comes to Doug Jones, the Democratic nominee, uh, boy, a lot of people kind of scanned over his thoughts on abortion and Planned Parenthood, etc., and right there is enough for me to say, no, I don't want that man anywhere close to a Senate seat. On the other side of the coin, 40 years, four decades and now all of a sudden supposedly some of these women are crawling out of the woodwork and making allegations against Roy Moore for something that happened over 40 years ago I mean what are you to believe today well I, I believe you, you that your choice is really is between believing something from 40 years ago even if it's true and what you believe is best for the country today. I mean, like I said, it's, an, it's not a fun choice. Somebody who chased, who might have been chasing teenage girls around a mall, or somebody who's okay with teenage girls having abortions up until you know nine months. I mean, this is this is serious. This is life or death in that situation. So that does you know make this a lot more of a again a much more of a serious thing. And again, like the date of the allegations, you are talking about forty years ago, and. That, I mean, that's the Carter administration. You know, I mean, are we? do we really want to go with it? You know, not so much about more, let's take it a little broader, really dig into people's lives who are running for public office for every nook in, in, in every nook and cranny for what the sin they might have committed. I mean, Jesus isn't on the ballot anywhere. Yeah. And so you're always going to have some imperfect people. How far do we want to go? How far do we want to just go to destroy people? I mean, this thing came, about more came out, this guy who served the public for 40 years, this thing came out after it was too late for the GOP to change the ballot. Yeah. That smells to me of political hit. Well, you and, and me both. When you get something like that, you're like, okay, wait. That makes me defensive. Like, wait a minute, if you're going to try to take somebody out in that way, hey, I might be more willing to back them up a little bit. Well, you and me both on this, Al, uh, it just kind of has a, a dead fish smell to it that's been wrapped in newspaper and left on the back porch. Because this guy, Judge Roy Moore, has run for a lot of political uh, happenings and has been in the public eye. And 40 years, nobody said anything. There's been no leaked information. There's been nothing that's hit the press or the newspapers. I find it hard to believe. But the point I want you to elaborate on real quick is allegations versus the uh, the way our country exists on you are innocent until proven guilty. Today, allegations are almost the death threat. Yes, and, that, and that's troubling because people... I, People get, can get destroyed in a day from allegations, and then you find out three months later somebody lied. I mean, for example, you know, in this case, the minute I saw Gloria Allred involved in with one of the accusers, yep. I was like, okay, I'm not, I can't take that that accuser seriously because I know Gloria Allred will use people to destroy people in political campaigns. Yeah. She did it in California, Governor Governor Racia, yeah, Meg Whitman did it, did it about about ten years ago with Meg Whitman. Right. Uh, and so I just immediately become suspicious of that. But, the, but this notion of destruction of people just on allegations, uh, we really got to take our time and, and see what happens, see what unfolds, what other evidence is there, until you get to the point where, okay, the balance of evidence shows this, or there's definitive proof, like, oh, let's say pictures of your hands on somebody's breasts, 
you know, yeah. <laughs> like Mr. Franklin. Yeah. Uh, so you you know you need to have more. I think just just out of common, you know, as a common sense, because people can get destroyed in this, especially in this atmosphere right now, in a heartbeat, and that's that's wrong. Well, you know, at the end of your piece, you wrote, "Then again, as Dr. Michael Brown points out, if Roy Moore is lying now, that is a huge issue, and in that case, Judge Moore won't be judged by voters or the Senate Ethics Committee, but by one far more powerful." I love the way you wrap that up because I believe in exactly what you said. But the point is, there's been so much dirt cast upon Judge Roy Moore, and if the allegations all prove to be absolutely baseless what about all the egg that's on the faces of the republican party and mitch mcconnell and everybody else that will be something that will be something i mean again we don't we weren't there 40 years ago so i don't want it, it my natural tendency is not to say that the accusers especially some of them were were are not telling the truth but, but again it in the political climate and you know, the fact that it hadn't come out and the fact that there hasn't been more, I mean, if this guy was this much of a predator, the, the floodgates would have opened. It would have been like Weinstein. Yeah. Where, you know, one, one broke, broke through, then another, then another, then another, and now you're up to dozens. You know, this would have been a predatory thing, and we would have seen it somewhere over the last 40 years. So that, that is something that, that is one of those things that put, puts the, tips the balance a little bit in his favor. Of Like, okay, we haven't seen that behavior in 40 years. They'd be all over the place. Now, that's not to say tomorrow, if he, you know, there's going to be a bunch of people who come out now that he's won, who wanted him to win because of poli- for political reasons. We don't know. Well, it, I don't know if this thing's going to end even after tonight. So. You know, and let me ask you this final thought. I know you've got to leave early, Al, but uh, answer this. What? are you projecting or what are you presuming might happen if the Democrats, if if Roy Moore wins that Senate seat on behalf of the Republican Party, what kind of absolute nutty messes are the Democrats going to try to create? I, I think this, uh, how high is up, what, what they'll do is unbelievable. Yeah, they're, they're not going to let up on Trump. That, that's the ultimate target. I, I, that, that is their ultimate target, is, is President Trump. Yeah. So they'll keep. It's no coincidence. Yeah, there's, there's women yesterday on Megyn Kelly and having press conferences yesterday. You know, organized by a group funded by George Soros. It's not going to stop. It's going to get a lot worse now. I want to commend you on your excellent work with the stream, Al. You got to make a promise that you're going to come back more often. You do a good job, and it's nice to have you on the show. And see, I'm getting you off of here about three minutes early. Yay. <laughs> All right, Al Parada with the stream. God bless and Merry Christmas, my friend. Merry Christmas to you and God bless you. Thank you very, very much. Nice man. And, yeah, today is going to be a day that is, I think, going to go down in history as, wow, did you see that or did you hear that in regards to Roy Moore and Doug Jones uh, vying for that Senate seat in the state of Alabama? And, you know, really, when you come right down to it, like I started the interview with Al Parada, uh, both parties, not really too much to be proud of. One with allegations that sound damning and incriminating, and the other, Doug Jones, oh my goodness, his stand on various things, absolutely not wouldn't want that man in a Senate seat. We'll see what happens. Calls are welcome and appreciated, as always. Give me a jingle on the landline at 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I got a couple of Merry Christmas wishes. And one is from the Fairview Inn and Suites by Marriott at 230 West 7th North in Burley. They want you to have your family here for Christmas. But... You don't want your family to stay at your home for Christmas. You don't want to share your bathroom. Well, that's where the Fairview Inn and Suites by Marriott comes in. They're going to give you a special room reservation rate of only 89 bucks, So you can get your relatives here to enjoy opening the packages and eating the turkey and everything, but then they can use the bathroom over at the Marriott <laughs> in their own room. I don't blame you. Hey, all you have to do is call 677-5000. Fairview Inn and Suites by Marriott wishing you a Merry Christmas. Christmas. And it'll be a Merry Christmas if your relatives stay at the Fairview Inn. 
Okay, and then also our old buddy, old buddy, Doug's Alternator and Starter Repair, 635 21st Street in Hayburn, number to call, 878-4991. He wants to say thank you to all of his customers, and also remember the reason for this season, the birth of Jesus. Christmas time. Merry Christmas from Doug's Alternator and Starter Repair. All right, your turn. Come on, give me a call. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Really would like to hear from you this morning. I'm, I'm getting lonesome here without some of my people giving me a call. Love to hear from you. While I'm waiting for your call, I want to tell you something about your dogs that really, really is important. And uh, I got this notice from Dr. Bill and the crew over at Ark Animal Hospital about two weeks ago, and there is a very dangerous blue-green algae that grows now along the edges and the banks of the Snake River and other ponds and waterways around the area. And they're urging you at Ark Animal Hospital not to let your dogs go near the Snake River because with that uh, possibly licking or eating the blue-green algae, it can kill them. It's very important to keep your dogs away. I mean, jaundice and seizures and coma and shock and eventually death. Take your dogs immediately to Ark Animal Hospital. But in the first place, don't let them near the water. 750 21st Street near Connection Credit Union, Hayburn, Idaho, Ark Animal Hospital. And it's so true. They do have the warm hearts for the cold noses. All right, now it's your turn. Give me a call, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. I am very, very bitter this morning at uh, kind of a double-edged sword. Last night, Monday Night Football, the Miami Dolphins played the New England Patriots. I do not like the New England Patriots, and so I was happy the Miami Dolphins won that game. However... There were three Dolphin players that knelt and took a knee. I did not watch the opening. I did not watch the entirety of the game because I will not do that. I'm banning the NFL. But I read a story this morning in the paper that really upsets me. The Dolphins that took a knee and sat during the National Anthem were Kenny Stills, Michael Thomas, and Julius Thomas. And what really fried my bacon this morning was that this Kenny Stills was nominated by his teammates last week for the NFL's very prestigious Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. Here we have a football player, highly paid, underworked, making millions, takes a knee, shows complete disrespect for the country that provided that to him and for him, and his teammates nominate this person to be possibly the NFL's Walter Payton Man of the Year. How disgusting. And Walter Payton would roll over in his grave. All the more reason why the NFL needs to clean up their act. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later on this morning. And awarding Roger Goodell a $200 million contract, yes, $50 million a year, to let this cancer grow and be worse is absolutely insane. I wouldn't have offered him $200. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Please give me a call. I would love to talk to you and wish you a Merry Christmas and your family a Merry Christmas. Come on, everybody, give me a jingle. And uh, right now I want to talk about some folks that I think just absolutely, I'm proud. I'm proud that they called me and they said, would you wish folks in the Magic Valley a Merry 
Christmas and a Happy New Year. And you know who it's from? Your lamb and wool growers in the Minicash area, past and present. These are really hard-working people that have dedicated their lives for the enhancement of the wool and lamb industry. And uh, there are some Idahoans that have been a major part of Idaho's history and are proud to be a participating great big event of Idaho's economy in the future. These are quality people, and they wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year on behalf of the lamb and wool growers in the Minicasha area. That's nice. I like that. All right, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Give me a call, please. I'd like to talk to you about anything and everything. The big fear from most of the people that are very well versed in terror and what might happen what might not happen etc the big fear this morning from some of the people i've talked to on the telephone earlier at about six o'clock our time eight o'clock back east is that maybe we're being lulled into a false sense of hey it's over the possible attack on New York and or any other city during Christmas time. Well, that was it. It was a dud. Don't worry about it. It's all done. That is a major fear from people that are in the know right now this morning. And there was even a couple of people that I heard and I talked to that said, this dud that happened might have been a kind of a precursor or a warning that we might not be heeding. And we might let our guard down. And the person that I listened to at about, I think it was quarter to five this morning, said it, I think, the best, that all citizens of this great United States, regardless of where you live, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, the hinterland in between, all of us need to be very wary. All of us need to be very cognizant. If you see something that's out of the norm, say something. See something, say something. Don't worry about being a tattletale, if you will. Don't worry about being the squeaky wheel. If you see something, say something. Your lives may depend on it. All right, calls are welcome. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Santa's favorite place to shop is Lee's Furniture, Floors, and More at 459 Overland and Burley. Holy cow, Jeff and the whole crew over there. What nice people. And they got the biggest savings, the best values on everything for your home. No money down, no interest, up to 12 months on approved credit. Holy cow. Recliners and chairs. What a selection. And sofas, sofas, sofas all over the place. Bedroom sets, dining room sets, carpet. Oh, ho, ho, you better get in there. It's true. This is Santa's favorite place to shop. And I also want to thank Jeff and the folks over at Leeds Furniture Floors and More because they provided that beautiful flex steel men's recliner we're going to draw for at Denny's annual Christmas party this Thursday, December 14th from 8 to 11. Get in there. Eat lunch, eat breakfast, eat dinner, sign your receipt, your meal ticket receipt, put your phone number on there, drop it in the box, and you might be the lucky winner of that beautiful Flex Steel Men's Recliner. Thank you to Jeff and the crew over at Lease Furniture. Thank you to Thomas and the folks over at Denny's Restaurant America's Diner. Boy, Merry, Merry Christmas. It's going to be a dandy. Uh, Also, you know, of course, Let's Ride. i got to tell you a little bit about those folks. They are really uh, welcoming you to come by and check out all the new snowmobiles. Oh, my goodness sakes, they've got a great, great selection for you over at Let's Ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays 9 to 4. And listen to this. They've got certain murders. Certain (laughs) murders. I love that when I make a mistake. They have certain motorcycles and ATVs that are 20% off. Woo! All accessories are 25% off, and they've got a great selection of accessories for Christmas gifts. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, and by the way, 
They have a service department with really nice, knowledgeable people to keep you running and having fun outside. That's exactly right. Nick, Randy, and the whole crew at Lest Ride say Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. They're located over at 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World, and it is true. This is where the fun is sold. Absolutely. And also, too, while you're over in that area, you might want to call Cameron and Siemens Insurance on Highway 24 in Rupert and uh, make an appointment. Make an appointment for all your life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, and employee benefits. Why, Todd might even put on his Santa Claus outfit and sit behind the desk and go, ho, 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 at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Call them today, 436 4424. Right now, we've got another gentleman. That is, yes, sir. I was just going to let you know that uh, I have not been able to reach him yet. I did leave a voicemail, but I'm still trying to continue to call him. There is no reason that he's not. Prosecutors in New York. What is that, Wheels? It was the switcher. It just decided to go off, and so I had to quickly turn it off. It's it's one of my most aggravating things <laughs> in the studio, let me tell you that. But well, keep trying Keep trying for Dave Shatakis, would you please? I'd appreciate that. Yes, sir. All right. Until that happens and we get our guest found, give me a call, please, at 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I got a little bit of time here, and I would love to visit with you. Do you realize that yesterday I heard a news story that was so ridiculously juvenile by the media, and it was on CNN, it was on, I think ABC and CBS carried it, and they're making a big to-do about what President Trump eats. I'm not kidding. Here we are in the middle of budget and tax reform problems, North Korea wants to kill us, ISIS and terrorism, and much of the media is concentrating their efforts to put in front of the the uh, American people a great newscast that says President Trump drinks too much Diet Coke. I'm not making this up, believe me. It just shows you what kind of nincompoops are involved in the media. And a couple of them said, like one guy on CNN was really criticizing Donald Trump. He goes, oh, he eats too much fast food. Why, that's terrible. He shouldn't eat fast food. And he drinks way too many Diet Cokes. And they were coming up with ungodly numbers of Diet Cokes that he drinks during the day. I can't imagine anybody drinking Diet Coke like that. Uh, But anyway, there's so much more they should be concentrating on. But they'll find any and all opportunities to their benefit, they think, to create more negativism against Donald Trump and his administration. It absolutely drives me nuts. All right, calls are welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Yes, sir. I have Dave on the phone for you now. Very good. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Wheels. And we have with us a first-timer that I don't think he's ever been on the program before. And we say good morning to, and I hope I don't mess up his name, David Shatoskis. Is that right? Well, it's pretty close, Zeb. It's uh, Shostokis. That was my next choice. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I figured it might be. I figured it might be. Okay. You're, pretty, you're pretty good with names, and so uh, just focus. So, I knew that would be your next uh, your next shot at it. All right, Dave. I tell you what, it's good to have you on the program. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, where you make your money, and what's going on. Uh, Zeb, I'm uh, I'm an attorney. I'm uh, licensed in uh, both Florida and Illinois. I used to be a state prosecutor, uh, a kind of an anomaly, a Republican prosecutor in Cook County, Illinois. Uh, so that gave me some skills, and I worked with the Constitution and Court for about 30 years. And uh, of late, I've written a couple of books. One, uh, one called Constitutional Sound Bites, which has got 150 questions and answers about the uh, about the founding documents. Because uh, most people aren't going to read the Federalist Papers these days; they more like uh, to see uh, tweets and blog posts. So we kind of uh, translated uh, the founding documents into uh, a 21st century presentation. And then uh, this uh, this past uh, July, 
I had uh, released the uh, creating the Declaration of Independence, which uh, follows uh, Richard Henry Lee, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson in the weeks uh, leading up to the uh, issuance of the Declaration of Independence and how they documented really, really changed the world uh, came uh, came into being. And so I'm pretty excited about uh, about both those books. And now uh, I um, do uh, constitutional litigation these days and um, write uh, and write those books and um, comment on, uh, on things going on. Wow. You really opened up a Pandora's box of questions for me. Uh, Dave, let me ask you this. You said you are in Chicago, correct? That's correct. Okay, now I, I might tell you up front before we really get serious that I am a dyed in the wool. I mean, I eat, sleep, and breathe the Chicago Cubs. They are my absolute number one baseball team. I have everything with Cubbies on it here in my office, so I just want to tell you that up front. Please don't tell me you're a White Sox fan. Okay, I won't tell you, Zeb. Okay. Uh, but I did grow up on the South Side and uh, used to sit a couple of rows behind the very first Mayor Daly at the White Sox games a uh, long, long time ago. All so, right. Uh, I won't tell you I'm a White Sox fan, but I will tell you my history. All right. Well, listen, I've got to ask you this about Chicago because I've, I've really been wanting to get somebody on the program as of late to discuss this. Why is this city... Chicago in such disarray. I've been there many, many, many times in my life. I was born and raised back in southern Wisconsin, and I've gone to Chicago uncountable times. Why is the city in such total disarray? Is it the leadership with Rahm Emanuel? What's going on in Chicago that it can't be cleaned up? Well, it's certainly not for uh, lack of effort on the heart of, on behalf of uh, both the uh, police and the prosecutors. I used to be a, I used to be a prosecutor, and I worked with the uh, Chicago uh, Chicago Police Department for a number of years. And it's certainly not uh, because of uh, because of for lack of effort on behalf of the folks in law enforcement, both in the both in the court system and uh, out on the streets. But I would have to say that it's uh, really very unfortunate that they've been playing identity politics in this uh, city for, you know, about 50, 60 years. And they've gone uh, out of their way. The people that are supposedly leaders of these um, different uh, different minority communities uh, really do their best to uh, isolate the communities to uh, so that they have a they have a collection of collection of votes that they can count on to keep them in power, and uh, it's a terrible, terrible, uh, terrible combination of factors that do not provide the incentive for the uh, political leadership to actually improve uh, the life of uh, the vast majority of Chicago citizens. And what they wind up doing actually is, you know, of course, concentrating on the uh, big money folks in the uh, downtown yeah. loop area, yeah. and let the uh, let the rest of let, let the rest of the city kind of, uh, unfortunately, as you say, fall into, into disarray. Well, let and, me. Uh, it's uh, you know, it's fifty, sixty years of uh, single uh, single party rule. Yeah, uh, it's no uh, not particularly different than the uh, than having a uh, being in a being in a country where there is only only one party in charge. You know, there's no uh, there are no re- Republicans to speak of, and uh, there's no uh, there's no opportunity to participate. And it's just a really, really unfortunate thing because it's not competitive, uh, and it's not competitive from a from a leadership standpoint. Well, and it's a it's a terrible, terrible shame. We look at cities like uh, New York City with Bill De Blasio, another liberal Democrat, very liberal and a Democrat. Chicago, Rahm Emanuel. You look at other cities on the coast, San Francisco, L.A., etc., run by Democrats and going into complete dysfunction and disarray. But I would say this about Chicago with all the gun violence and the deaths in that city. You being a constitutionalist and understanding our amendments and our rights and the Second Amendment, boy, if the Second Amendment's going to die, it's going to be because of cities like Chicago with the illicit gun crime and mayors like uh, Rahm Emanuel pushing for more and total gun control. Do you think I'm wrong? No, I, 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 do, I, do, I don't think that you're wrong uh, from that philosophical basis, but uh, I would uh, point out that the, uh, that the Supreme Court case that bred 
you know, gave life to the Second Amendment did arise uh, from a uh, resident of the city of Chicago who uh, protested the uh, severe restrictions on his gun law on, the, on his gun rights when he'd been robbed in his home three different times. And ultimately, that case found its way to the Supreme Court, and that's what breathed, uh, gave life to uh, uh, the uh, the Second Amendment. Certainly, the, originally the Heller case, and then it was followed up by the by the Chicago case that that actually has breathed life in the last ten years to the Second Amendment that didn't exist before. So perhaps um, the fact that these people try to restrict guns in uh, such tremendous ways. Is does give uh, does give rise to citizens who oppose those things and want to be able to defend themselves, and uh, so the reason that uh, the Second Amendment has had life in the last few years is because of uh, a case that arose in the city of Chicago. Very well stated, Dave. I've got to ask you this and get back to more of the heart of what we were going to talk about this morning. Right now, I look at this political process on both sides of the aisle. I don't know who to trust. I don't know who to ask to leave. I don't know who to throw out in the swamp. I don't know what's going on. But now, uh, Senator Cory Booker, Democrat of New Jersey, is calling on President Donald Trump to resign over so-called sexual misconduct allegations. We've seen so many others don't let the doorknob hit them in the butt on the way out. They had to resign. There's going to be more. We've got the situation in Alabama this morning with Roy Moore and Doug Jones. What is going on here? Well, certainly one of the one of the big problems is everybody paints every allegation with the same brush. And, of course, there's uh, degrees of uh, misconduct, and, then, of course, there's uh, also degrees of believability. And... Uh, in certain circumstances, of course, the Franken situation, you've got, you've got pictures. And uh, Franken, uh, Franken had made, uh, made admissions uh, relative to uh, President Trump and, uh, and Judge Moore. Both of them have uh, deci- you know, decisively uh, contested, uh, contested the allegation. Uh, and you know, at the moment, uh, you get the Franken situation and, of course, uh, the two other, uh, uh, Farron Hold and, uh, and and uh, Trent Franks on uh, the Republican side, and uh, the um, former dean of the House and, uh, in Detroit on the uh, Democratic side. But the elective, uh, elective people are in a, in a, should, be in a, should be in a different category than uh, the people that are in private industry, such as, uh, such as the news anchors that have been uh, the, the Charlie Roses of the world and the Matt Lowers. Yeah. Because of course they're private, uh, they're, they're private individuals, and the private companies certainly want to uh, deal with those circumstances, uh, relationship to uh, relationship to their customers and their viewers. When it comes to the elective folks, it's, it's an entirely different circumstance. Like relative to more, more of course has uh, has denied everything uh, vehemently, and certainly I would suggest that uh, he's been uh, not a. Uh, not a private figure for the last 30, 35 years. He's been a, a pivotal figure in Alabama politics, elected to the Supreme Court twice uh, in one national, or excuse me, one statewide office twice. And uh, it's very, very difficult to believe that uh, under the, uh, as controversial and as uh, for, uh, out, out in the public as Mr. Moore has been over the years, it's very difficult to believe that something like this uh, would not have uh, would not have made its way to the uh, public debate, and so should the people of the state of Alabama choose to elect him with this uh, with the knowledge of this controversy, it would seem to me that he's appropriately seated in the United States Senate. Um, and the same argument actually stands for the for the president is because the uh, there, there are no new accusations relative to what what Senator Booker is talking about. These are uh, these accusations came to light during the course of the campaign. People of the United States of America elected uh, Mr. Trump uh, president despite those elect, despite those allegations. So they made those judgments. Uh, now, uh, now Franken, on the other hand, Franken uh, people of the state of Minnesota did not know about uh, Franken about any allegations against Franken uh, during the course of the time that. He was uh, he was being run run for election, and he only won by, geez, I think it was what three hundred votes out of three million cast or something yeah, something yeah. like that. Had they known, he, it may have made a difference in his election. 
So Frank is in a, Frank is in a different uh, circumstance, and so I, I think you have to judge every situation individually rather than uh, with this uh, broad brush that seems to be uh, thrown about. And certainly Booker is uh, doing a few things to position himself to run against the president, so I don't know that I pay too much attention. And you can't uh, force a president to resign. Uh, the only uh, only remedy for uh, presidential misconduct is, in fact, uh, impeachment. Let me ask and, you this. Uh, and that's a, that's a political process. Uh, while it's cloaked in legal terms of high crimes and misdemeanor, uh, Gerald Ford is famously known for saying, you know, what's impeachment? What's an impeachable offense? It's whatever uh, 50% of the House and two-thirds of the Senate say it is. Yeah. And uh, as a practical matter, that's really, really very true. And so... I don't think it's fair to, uh, I think every one of these situations needs to be judged individually, and uh, certainly uh, relative to uh, Judge Moore, uh, it's very, very difficult to understand how he has been such a public person for such a long period right. of time, and very, very controversial. Uh, it's uh, difficult to understand that uh, these kind of this kind of information about Judge Moore would not have come to the forefront uh, sometime before three weeks ago. Let me ask you a little bit more about that. You know, I have never in my life, I'm an old man, and in my lifetime uh, in this great country, the United States, born and raised with the concept that anyone is innocent until proven guilty. And then uh, the law of justice and the scales of justice will come down on that person. However, with allegations, today it's almost like a death knell the minute you get an allegation. I've never seen such a transition in our laws and the acceptance of what is not even fact at that point. Well, certainly the uh, concept of innocent until proven guilty is one that uh, takes place in a court of law, not necessarily in the court of public opinion, uh, and so those are those are two different uh, those are two different apples and oranges, if you will. And uh, certainly, there's nothing to uh, prohibit people from uh, making a judgment whether they're going to do business with someone or whether they're going to vote uh, for someone based on uh, information that they have. That's completely different from a situation where a jury has to decide whether someone is guilty or not of a crime, uh, in which case there's a presumption of innocence that goes along with that. Historically, that presumption of innocence, of course, has uh, has followed, uh, followed that concept through to uh, life in the uh, life outside the courtroom as well. But mm-hmm. you are correct, there's been a transition where there's a simple allegation and there's a presumption of guilt. Which is uh, dangerous for uh, dangerous for everybody. Presumably, it should not permeate uh, permeate our whole world because everybody will be afraid of doing anything. They'll be afraid of being with anybody in any circumstance. So it's uh, it's it's I suspect kind of indicative of the distrust that uh, unfortunately has been shown by uh, many uh, many in the political realm because they, they do that to um, promote their tribalism and their identity politics as opposed to promoting the idea that we're all Americans and we're all in this together. Very and well it said. It makes it easier to slice and dice people when you can point a finger at them, call them a name, and say they're guilty of something. Absolutely well stated. I'm going to say your name again, and this time I'm going to hit a home run with it, just like the Cubs if they play interdivisional with the White Sox. It's David Shostokas, right? Perfect, Zeb. All right, my friend. I wish you and yours a Merry Christmas. Come back and visit with us again. I've enjoyed it this morning. Merry Christmas. I've enjoyed it as well. Hopefully uh, some of your folks will follow me on Twitter, at Shostokas. It's very simple. All right. I hope they do, and I will too. God bless you, man. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Jeff. All right, sir. Uh, Nice, nice man right there. I enjoyed visiting with him. David Shostokas in Chicago, and he's an author and uh, constitutional authority. Really enjoyed that conversation. Thank you, David. Come back soon. Oh, the weather.
The weather is brought to you. I want some more calls this morning. I miss my friends and all the people here calling in. I know what you're doing. You're out Christmas shopping. I figured it out. Okay. The weather is brought to you by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company at 1710 Overland in Berlin and 655th Street in Rupert. Two locations to serve you, and they are absolutely the best, providing accounting services to the Minicash area for well over 50 years. And they want to wish you you and yours a very merry christmas and a happy new year and don't forget about tax planning before the end of this year Uh uh-uh don't forget the best to work with you and for you phillips oaks goodwin crane and company with offices in burley and rupert right now here's who's got the weather this hour anyways not gina who's giving the weather i forgot my friend scotty oh scotty the the old Scotsman is doing it. Uh, for some reason, I thought I heard a rumor that Gina was back in there doing the weather, and I didn't know, so I thought I'd check. So here's Scotty with the weather. Foggy, foggy, and then a little bit more fog. Good morning for your 7th Ranch weather forecast. Scotty Cameron sitting in for Gina Jameson. Yes, that fog trend is going to continue. Looking for areas of freezing fog this morning. Highs around 34 tonight. Again, areas of freezing fog expecting a low of 17. Then for Wednesday, freezing fog again. Hazy in the afternoon expecting a high around 33. Then for Wednesday night, yep, again, I sound like a broken record. Areas of freezing fog expecting a low around 19 for Thursday. Freezing fog and haze in 38. Again, the same thing for Thursday night with a low of 23. That's your 7th Ranch weather forecast. Scotty Cameron sitting in for Gina Jameson. And I'll tell you, Scotty does a good job. They both are so good at putting that weather together for us every morning on the program. And thank you to Scotty this morning. Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company with offices in Burley and Rupert. And I urge you to see them. They want to thank everybody out there for the business. Absolutely the best. Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company serving you and your family and your business. All right, it's your turn. Give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I need your help. I need your help. I really do. I need somebody to call in and uh, give me some ideas as to what to buy my blushing bride of 46 years for Christmas. Now, she's out in the other room, but she's on the telephone, and I don't think she can hear us. So if you've got some Christmas ideas for me, I am at a loss. I need some ideas. Call me at 436-2244 right now while she's on the phone and she can't hear you. And uh, we'll talk about it quickly. Give me some thoughts. Good ideas? Help me. Because I'm not a very good shopper. I walk in the store. I go to where I think the product is located. I buy the product, I I pick up the product, go to the cash register, and I'm out of the store. I can accomplish my Christmas shopping literally in 30 minutes. I'm done, out of there, home, enjoying the warm furnace. Give me a call. Let me know what your ideas are for Deanne. i got to have some Christmas ideas. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Believe me, I am out of ideas. I haven't got a clue. And uh, everybody will say, what is she like? Well, she likes everything. And I'm still out of ideas. Give me a call quickly, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Oh, I mentioned earlier this morning while I'm waiting for your call that I hope is coming in, it would be a public service to me, that the birthday and anniversary dinner that's held at the Senior Junction Senior Center is not, underline the word not, going to be this Wednesday, tomorrow. It's going to be Thursday. Don't get confused. The birthday and anniversary dinner that is normally going to be held uh, tomorrow. Nope, nope, not tomorrow. It's going to be held on Thursday at the Senior Junction on Overland in Burley. Don't forget that. And thanks to Dennis Babbitt. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hello? Are you there? 
Can you hear me? No, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Wheels, what happened to the connection? I think it's just because she's on a cell phone, but give me a second. All right, we'll try it again. Okay, uh, evidently that call not coming through, and we'll take another one that I think is just ringing in quickly. I need Christmas ideas for my lovely blushing bride of 46 years. A caller, are you there? Good morning. <laughs> no, nobody's. Call back in, sir, and we'll see if. Uh, uh, take the other call. Take the other call, and we'll see who that caller is. We'll get him on the air real quick. And they hung up, sir. Oh well, why did they do that? It's just how the phone system is. Nope. I go to pick it up, and then before you know it, it's a deadline. No, we don't want deadlines. Not at this time of the year. We want everybody to be lively and jubilant and having fun and singing Christmas carols and having cookies and hot chocolate and wishing everybody a Merry Christmas, decorating their tree. I love it. I love it. We've got more lights up this year than ever. We even got one of those little gizmos that sits out in the yard and it turns and it sprays all different kinds of lights, you know, different colors and everything. Good morning, caller. You're on the air, I hope. Good morning. How are you this morning? Merry I'm Christmas. peachy and Merry Christmas to you. What can I do for you? I think I have an idea for you and Deanna, and I'm trying to make this really quick. Okay. How about renewing your marriage vows and surprise her with a, kind of like a second small honeymoon with doing that. That's, That's a great idea, but how do I know for sure if she's going to show up? <laughs> oh, she'll show up if she loves you. She'll be there. She is absolutely... That's a cute idea. I kind of like that. I like that idea. Lady, thank you. You might have just saved the next 46 years of my marriage. Well, you could go to that one place up there in Idaho Falls. They've got a special, special romantic, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's awesome. My grandson's gone up there and taken his wife, and they've only been married 13 years. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you very much for your call. You saved my bacon. Appreciate it. Okay, have a Thank you. Bye. Merry Christmas. Nice lady. Hey, by the way, too, don't forget Sportsman's Warehouse at 1940 Bridgeview in Twin Falls. My favorite place to shop. I just like to go in and browse and look. And, oh, my goodness, for the hunter, the fisherman, the archer person, everything they've got in there, all the clothes and the footwear and the knives. I love knives. I collect knives. They've got them all at Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview in Twin Falls. Oh, my goodness. And in every department at Sportsman's Warehouse, they have experts, experts that can help you with all your questions. That's really true. Reese and the staff, excellent people, wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas. Get in and have some fun shopping at Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview in Twin Falls. Coming up next hour, he just walked in the door. His helpers rolled out the red carpet to come down the hallway to the uh, studio, and he walks in with all of his radiant glory. Dr. History will be coming up in just a matter of a few minutes, and uh, up until that time, I'll wish you a very Merry Christmas, and stay tuned for the news, and we'll be back in about seven minutes. Wheels, how about some Christmas music? Go for it, my friend. Oh, good morning. Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas. Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them at 734-6969. Uh, we're going to have Dr. History <clears throat> excuse me, in just a moment. I want to remind you on Thursday, we have a special segment called Cache County School Days. Our thanks go out to A Child's World at 1308 Overland in Burley for sponsoring that segment. And don't forget, a great family store. All the toys and the puzzles and the games and the clothing and the furniture. Oh, my goodness, you're going to love A Child's World on Overland in Burley. Along with the Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue, Suite E in Burley. Number to call and find out how they can save you money on your outpatient surgeries, 677 677- 
888-888. Ambulatory Surgery Center and a Child's World bringing you school days in Cassia County. By the way, Christmas messages go out from Vicky's Country Garden at 185 South, 600 West of Paul. Great Christmas gift giving idea. Call Vicky on her cell phone right now, 431-5667, and get a gift certificate for next spring and summer. Vicky's Country Garden and Paul, Merry Christmas. Along with Streamline Precision, they encourage all of you to go up to a person in uniform today, shake their hand, and say thank you. These men and women put their lives on the line so we can live in the best place in the world, America. Thank you from Streamline Precision at 120 South, 100 West of Burley. Merry Christmas. And last but not least, Magic Valley Irrigation at 44 East, 500 South of Burley. Number to call, 678-3101. Jeff and the crew, they wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And they salute all the farmers in this area. Magic Valley Irrigation. Right now, my goodness sakes, look who's here. It is the one, the only... Some of us are happy about that. Dr. History. Good morning, Zeb. How are you, buddy? Doing great. Been yeah. watching the national finals a little bit. We've got a few Idaho boys uh, competing there this year. You know, I was talking earlier about the money. It has really increased since I was a part of the finals back in the 80s and 90s. I am amazed at what some of those guys take home in Big, here. big money. And then right down the street at the South Point, they're having the World Series team roping finals. And I said last hour that last year, just to give you a, a little example of how much money these guys are running for, last year the number 10 rope, and you know now team roping is on a number system, and you compete within the people of your same number designation. Last year the winning team last year in the number 10 down in Las Vegas walked out with $348,000. That could buy a few saddles. And a few pads. <laughs> yes. And maybe a few more horses. <laughs> of and course. And maybe a truck and trailer. And they'll just keep buying horses till it's gone. Yeah, all right. <laughs> what are we going to talk about this Well, morning? you know, uh, across the Old West, town sprang up uh, because of traffic. Now, yeah. whether it was railroad town, a the Oregon Trail towns, uh, the cattle driving towns. So we're going to talk about a little of that, one of them being Dodge City. So, really? Old Dodge City. Yeah. Matt, Dillon, Kitty, Doc, oh, yeah, the whole nine yards. You betcha. Okay. So, you know, on the western edges of the shifting trail towns, the camps of the white buffalo hunters yep. were becoming more and more numerous. Small trading centers established for the hunters soon were mushrooming into towns. Uh-huh. Now, for centuries, the buffalo had served as a source of food, clothing, and shelter, of course, for the Indians. And when the whites first pushed westward, and for many years afterward, they considered the buffalo just kind of a, a nuisance. Yeah. And they didn't really care for the buffalo. Yeah. Well, finally, when the fur trappers had practically exterminated the beaver and the other animals, they turned to the buffalo for skins. Yeah. So, now one of the great buffalo hunters was William F. Cody Buffalo, buffalo Bill. Bill. That's where he won his legendary name. Yeah. Well, after the Kansas Pacific Railroad reached a place called Hayes City, the contracting firm needed a good buffalo hunter to supply meat for the railroad laborers. So Cody was recommended by, actually, by Wild Bill Hickok. And the contractors offered him $500 a month. Now, that's a lot of money. Back in those Back days. days. If he could supply enough buffalo meat to feed the hungry men. Well, Buffalo Bill worked for the company for 17 months, and by his own count, killed 4,280 buffalo during that year and a half. Wow. Now, the railroad workers were said to have given Cody the name of, and that stayed with him, which was Buffalo Bill. So that's where it originated, was him uh, killing buffalo for the railroad. Yeah. And, you know, really, I hate to sound gruesome on this, but he did the shooting. <laughs> we're gonna, but the guy, yeah, I know, yeah. you're going to get to the guys that did the dirty work. Oh, yeah, we'll explain a little. Uh, it's close to lunch. Anyway, yeah. but, you know, actually some of the famed peace officers of the trail towns also began their careers as buffalo hunters, yeah. including Wyatt Earp. Pat Garrett, Bat Masterson, those guys started out as buffalo hunters. I didn't know Bat Masterson. Yeah. So anyway, experienced buffalo hunters knew how to fire so as to keep a herd milling, bringing a new target into place after each shot. 
Now, the favorite weapon of the hunters were the Springfield needle guns yeah. and the Sharps rifle, which were sometimes used with uh, the sight, with a telescopic sight. And actually, a lot of times they placed it on a tripod, to, you know, just to keep it steady because their arm probably got tired. You, well, what about the recoil when you're shooting that many <laughs> buffalo every day? <laughs> they had to be tough. They were tougher than me and you. Wow. <laughs> but, and then, too, the barrels became so hot from continuous firing, but the needle guns received their name from the long firing pins that plunged through the paper cartridge to strike the primers. Okay, that's why it's called a needle gun. Now, Buffalo Bill used a Springfield, which he called, and he named his gun, he called it Lucretia Borgia. That was the name of his gun? That was the name of his gun. Uh Uh-huh. And he preferred, actually, get this, firing from horseback. Now, that surprises me a bit. I'd like to see him do that on my old horse, Stinger. (laughs) Hey, well, I've been deer hunting. The first thing I do is have to get off my horse before I shoot. Smart move. Anyway, so he would ride to the head of the herd and turn the leaders until he had the buffalo going around in a circle. Then he shot the animals, which broke off in a straight line. A good hunter could average between 50 and 100 buffalo every day. Every day. Now, when it was discovered that buffalo hides made really good machine belting, demand and prices increased even more. The railroads extending across the plains made possible the uh, economical shipment to the eastern markets, and the cattlemen welcomed and assisted in the obliteration of the buffalo herds, which supported the Indians and also interfered with their cattle. Wow. They they didn't want the buffalo no. you know competing for the for the range. Right. So anyway the railroads had split the buffalo into two great herds. Now in eighteen seventy there were four million buffalo on the south side of the Platte River. Mm. Four million. Four million. Then a half And you know that they counted them. They did. They yeah. had a guy. <laughs> I don't know what his name was. Uh, anyway, okay, so, and then a half a million were on the northern plains. Yeah. So four and a half million between uh, those two places. But between 1871 and 1875, practically all of the southern buffalo were slain. The slaughter not only wiped out the buffalo, it also ended the civilization of the Plains Indians. But, uh, again, it was good for the cattlemen because they they needed that range. So during the period of the greatest slaughter, a bill was proposed in the Texas legislature to protect the buffalo from the hunters. Now, General Phil Sheridan, who wanted to destroy the buffalo herds in order to subdue the Indians, appeared before the legislature to oppose the bill. He predicted that the passing of the buffalo would have the greatest impact on helping the cattle industry, and his prediction proved true. Yeah. It did. Yeah. But before the last of the buffalo had vanished, the cattle herds began moving in to the, you know, millions of acres of great uh, uh, grazing land. You know, you've been up through all that territory. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, even now, you know, millions of cattle. Yep. Across there. Anyway, in the early days of the slaughter, the buffalo skinning, and we I told you I'd get to this, oh, goody. was considered just miserable yeah. work. Hot in Kansas. Yeah. But as the wages increased, skinning became more respectable. Uh-huh. They had to pay them a little more to do this very uh, fun job. Yeah. Anyway, so in a hunting party, only one or two men used rifles, the others being skinners. Now get this, Zeb. A skillful skinner could peel, they called it peel, a large buffalo in five minutes. Five, five minutes. minutes. I mean... You know what my question is right now? What? Here you're talking about Kansas and Nebraska and back in that country. It's hot. Yeah. What about the quality of the meat by the time it got to the plate? Well, they didn't care about the meat. You know, they just wanted the hides. So oh. they could care. But, yeah, 100 a day. Well, oh. Anyway. Yay. But so what happened And is, they didn't have access to a shower. They did not. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to be a tent mate with one of those guys. Whoa. So anyway, after a buffalo skin was removed, it was pegged to the ground and left in the sun to dry. So it was pegged out. Okay. Yeah. Now, this guy named John R. Cook tells of having at one time 2,000 hides stacked up and drying. 890 of them, he said, I had skinned and was credited with. Can you imagine the <laughs> smell there, oh. monkey? Anyway, you know, that's aye, what he aye, said. But aye. So on the Santa Fe Trail, five miles west of Fort Dodge, Kansas, a sod house was built in 1871 to serve the buffalo hunters of that area. The place was known as Buffalo City. 
I don't know if that still exists or not. I don't know. I don't, haven't heard of that. I don't know. Anyway, when the Santa Fe Railroad's construction gangs arrived in 1872, they found beside the old Santa Fe Trail a general store, three dance halls, six saloons, and on all sides were huge piles of buffalo bones. Ugh. Now, I've seen pictures. Yeah. Buffalo bones just yeah. stacked 20, 30, 40 feet high. Yeah. So, anyway, the, the town now bore the name of Dodge City after Fort Dodge. Yeah. And that's what the old-timers called it. The cowboy capital Dodge was also the last and longest-lived of all the Kansas trail towns. Really? Yeah. So, there was a company that was the largest shippers of buffalo hides in Dodge, and they sent out 200,000 hides to eastern markets the first winter that the Santa Fe Railroad reached Dodge City. Now, Dodge was a ready-made trail town. There were two veteran buffalo hunters, a guy by the name of Jones and Plummer, had hauled buffalo hides north from Texas. So after they killed them, they hauled all these hides up north, and their uh, trace was soon converted into a route for cattle herds. So that's actually what started a trail uh, uh, for cattle. These these two guys. Yeah. And this was originally known as the Jones and Plummer <laughs> Trail, but it soon became the Dog City Trail. Really? And later, they called it the Western Trail. <clears throat> now, before its glory was ended, the Great Western Trail ran all the way from Bandera, Texas, through Dodge City to Ogallala, Nebraska, and on across the Sioux Rev- Reservations into the Dakotas to Calgary, Canada. Wow. So that trail went all the way through the whole of the United States, clear up to Canada. A smelly trail. <laughs> it was. So anyway, there's another place. Uh, it's called uh, uh, Fort Griffin. Now, this guy named Conrad has had a general merchandise store, sometimes averaged about $2,500 a day in guns and ammunition Ooh. to sell to the Buffalo Hunters. That's pretty good money back in that those days. That is really good, and I'm wow. sure he made a profit on that. Oh, yeah. So, But anyway, the number of hunters on the ranges this season is estimated at 1,500 hunters. And at Griffin, there was a plat of ground of about four acres covered with buffalo hides spread out to dry, besides a large quantity piled up for shipment. And these hides are worth in this place about a buck to buck sixty each. That's all they That's were all, worth. Yeah. So, so these skinners and hunters, you know, what they get for skinning and everything, I, fifty I don't know. cents a. Like I say, Buffalo Bill got, oh, you know, all that money for a month's work. Yeah. Or, yeah, for a year and a half. But anyway, the generally accepted idea of the exciting chase in a buffalo hunt, <laughs> well, that's not the plan pursued by the men who made it a regular business. I see. You know, you see on TV and one thing or another, these guys chasing down no. on their horse yeah. and shooting a yeah. buffalo. What they did, they like I say, they used a needle gun with a telescope, right? And they'd buy powder by the keg, their lead in bulk, and the shells, and they'd make their own cartridges back then. But Early cattle drivers on the Dog City Trail usually funneled their cattle north through this place called Fort Griffin uh, because it kind of offered them some protection from the Comanches. But uh, and nearby here were the Tonkawa Indians, and they were friendly. And they evidently believed the cattle herds were going to be a replacement for the buffalo killed by the white hunters. And it was said that there were more beeves lost to the friendly Tonkawas to, uh, than to the unfriendly Comanches. Didn't the Tonkawas open up a toy company? <laughs> You're close. Oh. Oh, there's a story about them I'm okay. not even going to get into. I think you did one time. <laughs> I will skip that. Yeah. Anyway, you know, few cattle drivers passed Fort Griffin without stopping over at the Beehive Saloon. Oh, yeah. Which had on its front a honeysuckle bordered sign and here's what the sign said i can't wait to hear it (laughs) it's kind of a uh, anyway yeah says within this hive we're all alive good whiskey makes us funny so if you're dry come up and try the flavor of our honey Uh (laughs) (laughs) uh-huh okay we'll just leave it at that all right now gambling was the favorite relaxation for drivers and buffalo hunters now these guys when they hit town it was Everything's I, I can't imagine. Yeah. And faro was a popular game. And I I can't remember what that was. I, uh, it's kind of a card game. Yeah, or is that the one with I, the... I need to check that out. Yeah. Anyways, during his heyday, Fort Griffin's, Fort Griffin's boasted some remarkable characters, including Doc Holliday and his delightful girlfriend, 
Big nose Kate Fisher, which oh, I think yeah. you said you went to school with her. Yeah, her sister. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. Doc Holliday was originally a Georgia dentist. We know that. And he kind of a thin, haggard-faced guy, kind of rough-looking. He had come west to Texas in hopes of improving his tuberculosis condition. Oh, yeah. And he opened up an office in Dallas and then turned to gambling. Wyatt Earp said that he once saw him bet $10,000 on the turn of one card. Re- did he win? I don't know. Oh. I knew you'd ask that. So in Fort Griffin, Doc Holliday teamed up with Big Nose Kate Fisher, who actually, in spite of her name, was a rather attractive, although they say fiery-tempered girl. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> I knew her sister. Okay. <laughs> oh, you had to know. One night. Okay, so here we go. One night in January 1878, Holliday actually killed a guy named Ed Bailey in a fight over a poker game. Now, the Fort Griffin Marshal, for a lack of jail, uh, imprisoned the gambler in the hotel room. Now, learning that Bailey's friends were planning a lynching party for Holiday, Big Nose Kate packed their belongings in a bag. She secretly obtained two fast horses, and then she set fire to the rear end of the hotel in which her boyfriend was imprisoned. Really? Her boyfriend was locked up in there? Well, Doc Holiday. Yeah, yeah, but she set fire to it. Yeah, to the back end of it. Oh. Okay. It was a big hotel. I see. Now, as soon as everybody in Fort Griffin ran to fight the flames, Big Nose Kate went into Holiday's room, threw down a pistol on the surprise guard with her six-shooter, disarmed him, gave Holiday the gun, and then hurried him out to the waiting horses. By the time the fire was out, they were a long ways off. They were long gone. They were. Big Nose Kate. Big Nose and Doc. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I had a picture of her somewhere. I'll have to check that out. I think you showed think me did. one of her yeah. one time. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, with its continual cattle traffic, Fort Griffin became kind of a boom town. And as the buffalo disappeared, a lot of the hunters turned to outlaws. So to combat them, masked vigilantes were organized. Horse thievery was considered the worst of a crime. No, wait a minute. You're telling me that the buffalo hunters... Yeah, they didn't actually, have a job anymore. They went to be outlaws. Yeah, well, they didn't have a job anymore. They had to turn to something. You know, oh. everybody's got to do something, Zab. Uh-huh. Well, they could have become a chiropractor. <laughs> we'll skip that one, too. Now, as I said, stealing a horse was considered the worst crime. You could do anything. Yeah. You steal a horse. Yeah, you're in trouble. So the vigilantes actually would hang a uh, placard on the dead with their names where they were hung. Now, it got to be that they hung so many guys that instead they labeled the victims horse thief number five, horse thief number six, mm. and left them kind of sway in the trees for a, a few days yeah. afterwards. Yeah. And that would kind of discourage you a little oh, bit. I would imagine it would. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But uh, from Fort Griffin, the drovers headed north, striking Red River, a place which came to be known as Don't Crossing. Now, the Bar X Ranch. Have you ever heard of that one, Zev? The Bar I, X? The, not the Bar X, okay. no. Anyway, it was owned by some English investors, and this was near Doan's Crossing. Well, one day in 1887, a company owner from England arrived unannounced on the mail stage. He stepped off the stage, and he was dressed to the hilt as a British... Britisher. What can I say? You know, Derby oh, hat. One of those guys that, yeah. you know, he, when he drinks his coffee or tea, the little yeah. finger goes up it, in the it's air. just very, very proper. Yeah. So he walked into Don's store. He perched a pair of overalls, a big hat, boots, a red bandana, went into the back room, changed into this cowboy outfit. I see. When he arrived at the Bar X Ranch, he asked for a job as a cowhand and got it. And remember, he's an owner of this ranch, but he's going in as a kind of an undercover oh, boss. Oh, undercover boss. Yes. And he started that TV series. Yes, he did. Now, during the next 10 days, this guy learned why the ranch was earning no profit from his for his colleagues. Couldn't they tell he was a foreigner by the way he talked? <laughs> you know, maybe he had a really good fake I'd say, hey, what is that over there? Is that a steer or a heifer? Yes. So anyway, he get, went back to the store, changed back to his English gentleman's outfit, summoned the manager of the ranch, fired him, and saved the company a considerable fortune. So he turned things around. Really? Now, north from Don's Crossing, the next base on the western trail was a place uh, Camp Supply 
It was what it's called in Indian Territory. And this was the army center used by Custer during his uh, operations against the Southern Cheyenne. We're almost out of time. Okay, and I'm almost out of words. Okay. <laughs> That'd be a first. <laughs> so, anyway, so, uh, anyway, beyond the Sioux country, there, uh, there was a guy named James Cook in 1876. Uh, he was just a young cowboy, and he was in uh, Texas, and uh, he goes on to tell about uh, uh, he was camped one time. Cook and his companions were caught in the backwash of the Custer defeat, so it was after the Little Bighorn. Yeah. Now, a party of Sioux warriors swarmed down on the cowboys and charged their camp, yelling and screaming. They had rifles and pistols, and uh, anyway, they formed a complete circle around Cook and his companions. One old warrior with a badly scarred face dashed up almost, and this is what he says, dashed almost up to my feet where he pulled his horse to a sudden stop. Now, the warrior wanted to know what the cowboys were doing in his country. Well, Cook told him that he and his companions had just driven a herd of cattle to the Indians on the Missouri River. Well, immediately the Indian turned to his war party and explained that the, what the white man was doing. And he said, we started, round, uh, we started in to round up our saddle horses, the cattle band of the Indians helping us, and they left. So when the Indians realized they were uh, taking cattle to them, they said, okay, well, we're not going to kill all you guys. <laughs> well, so, nice. So they rounded up their horses. Well, and I bet they sat and had... Everybody was happy. Just a little coffee together. Yeah, they and... probably sat down around the campfire, had some hot chocolate. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Little over marshmallows. Tea. Yeah. Dr. Pepper. You know? <laughs> I bet it was Dr. Pepper. Anyway, so thank you. So that's the story of a few of the towns along one of the trails. Okay. One of the trails. We ought to do a series on some of the towns on trails here. Yeah. Really? Well, and a lot of people don't realize, but there were a lot of cattle drives that actually went through right here yeah. on the south side of the Snake River. Absolutely. Over into the Owyhee country. Yep. yep. So. Well, Doc, you did it again. I understand the roads aren't that good. Eighth of a mile visibility. I had to slow down to about 80, 85 coming in. Oh, that's good for the <laughs> ISP to hear. Get him, boys. Anyway, no, I was going pretty slow. I've got to talk to you in just a minute, but I want All to right. tell everybody before I send it back over to Wheels that, of course, we are blessed to have so many great legislators right here in our area that are working and serving us, and one in particular that I'd like to highlight right now that really wants to wish you and your family and everybody a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and that is our Senator Kelly Anthon and his family. They wish you the best of this holiday season. They care. And they're doing all they can. Kelly's doing all he can to help support you and all of his constituents and work hard for the betterment of the state of Idaho. Merry Christmas wishes from Senator Kelly Anthon. Hey, by the way, don't forget, we're going to be over at Denny's Restaurant on Thursday for that great big Denny's Annual Christmas Party. It's going to be all morning over there from 8 to 11 on my program. We're going to be broadcasting live and direct door prizes, Santa Claus, choirs singing Christmas carols, and you can get in there and register right now for that great big beautiful lease, furniture, floors, and more flex steel men's recliner. We're going to give it away on Thursday morning. All of this at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner, and along with lease, furniture, floors, and more, Merry Christmas. Right now, we're going to send it back over to our main studios. I'll be back in just a few minutes. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. Dr. History always does a great job on our program. We appreciate him. Hey, Merry Christmas wishes from Speaker of the House and Representative Scott Bedke up at Oakley. There's a rancher and a family that really understand the land and of course all the folks that live right here in southern Idaho and Scott wants to take the time to wish you and yours the best of a very blessed Christmas season Merry Christmas from Speaker of the House Scott Bedke and also I want to mention to you another great representative that we have living right here in this area and that's Representative Fred Wood he cares about and understands this great state of Idaho and there's been so many times I've called him and had him on my program, and he really, really is diligent in serving you and all the issues. Well, from his house to yours, Representative Fred Wood says, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. 
Right now, we're going to get ready to go to the phone line, and uh, we've got a gentleman by the name of Michael Crabtree coming on the program with us this morning. Michael, good morning. How are you? Good, good to be with you. You know, I got to be honest with you, Michael. I have no idea what we're going to talk about this morning. I know that we had a replacement, your name, in place of Eric Schiffer. Are you going to talk about the NFL this morning, or is that not one of your topics? Well, I can talk about the NFL. I don't have much good to say about it. So uh, if you got NFL fans, I might run them all off. No, you won't, because I'll tell you something, Michael. I'm you happy to apply. Well, I appreciate that, because right now I have come out and said that I don't think there's anybody that was a bigger NFL fan than I have been, due to the fact that I grew up around uh, the 60s Green Bay Packers. I know all the guys, Bob Skaronsky, Jerry Kramer. Jerry's been on my radio program, Bart Starr. Jim Taylor, the list goes on and on. But that was a different era. That was a different player. Those were players that played for the love of the game and not the big money checks that they're getting nowadays that makes them overpaid, underworked athletes that are prima donnas. And what they're doing to disrespect our flag in our country, I found totally undefensible. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, I've been a moderate to, you know, kind of uh, advanced NFL fan for a number of years. I'm obviously a Falcons fan living in the city of Atlanta. I have been for a long time. And I find uh, NFL, the experience as a whole, to, to sort of be representative of a cultural decline in our country. First, you've got the the despairing, uh, disparaging of our flag, the disrespect of our servicemen and women, people that are standing for the Mexi- Mexican and British national anthem, but, but kneel and sit for hours as a protest of what they're calling an oppressive society. I would say to these NFL players, if you want to see oppression, go read about Nazi-era Germany. If you want to see oppression, go, go read about some of the countries in the Middle East. That's oppression. Uh, if you don't like what this country uh, stands for, then perhaps you should take your multi-million dollar annual paycheck and return it, or better yet, give it to some charity to change things. Get off the field making protests and turning that into politics and do something that's meaningful. That's what I'd have to say. Now, on top of it, my experience as an Atlanta Falcons fan, which mirrors that of, of my liberal, best friend from college's experience as a Tennessee Titans fan, is that the NFL is arrogant. The NFL is, a, is an entitled mentality that thinks the fans are pawns in their game and that we will just pay and put up with anything. And I, I think the NFL is starting to see a, a, a degradation on a number of fronts as a result of that. But it's really not a degradation fast enough. Uh, Goodell was on uh, some sports interview in the last 24 hours where he said that his his, uh, stadium attendance is down 1%. I believe that. I think the media has, um, uh, the conservative media has overblown that. It's not down as much as it should be. Um, And certainly the NFL ratings on television, they're 25 of the top 30 programs, but they're down as well. So they're still on top in terms of viewership and attendance. But they really should be suffering a little bit more. That's the only way they're going to change. One of the things that I saw this morning, and I don't know if you caught this or not, Michael, but uh, Kenny Stills, that plays for the Miami Dolphins, last night, he, along with two of his other teammates, they took a knee in protest again for the National Anthem. But I checked further on this, and Kenny Stills was nominated by his teammates last week for the very prestigious NFL's Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. This is so totally ridiculous that Kenny Stills would be up for an award of one of the great football players and one of the great people that helped work in his society and in his environment, and that was Walter Payton. I think it's a slap in the face to the award. Well, I I do, and I agree with you there. And I I think we conservatives, we can obviously dictate on those kinds of things and drive ourselves silly, and in some cases we we may find good company in our conservative echo chamber, and, and, and I'm not begrudging anybody for saying anything about the NFL negatively. I think they deserve all of it. At the same time, uh, we're not going to make a huge difference in this uh, at this juncture. It's going to be over time. It's going to be by voting with our own individual wallets, our own individual eyeballs. I don't know the math, but you're worth a few dollars every time you watch an NFL football game. And so if you uh, can bring yourself to turning it off and finding another pastime, for me, I canceled my Falcon tickets. I've had them for years. I said, see you later, take a hike. I sold my PSLs at a loss. 
Uh, it, it was a good financial decision because, quite frankly, I can buy tickets cheaper as a non-season ticket holder than I can, uh, you know, last minute on sub-up than I can as a ticket holder. That, right. that, to me, is a tragedy. It ought to be criminal that I'm paying more for being loyal than people off the street. And that's the problem with the NFL right now. So I'm going to vote with my pocketbook. I decided to uh, to go buy season tickets to my uh, favorite uh, college team, University of Tennessee Volunteers, where money hasn't fully corrupted that sport, some but not completely. And I think Americans are going to have to do that. Uh, Georgia fans, Colorado fans, Idaho fans, whatever state uh, or team that you follow, you know, go go support uh, the, a more pure version as your form of entertainment. Make Saturday fun day. And make Sunday the day you go fishing or spend time with the family. That's the only way to take our culture back from political leftist hacks who want to change the way America uh, is and works. I agree with everything you said, but there's another worry that I have, Michael, and it's not just the NFL, it's also the NBA. And when the NBA takes the court at any game, you're looking at almost 100% of the players on the court are going to be blacks, and many of which have come out in uh, denunciation of our country and also our flag and respect for our flag, and it's the perpetration of animosity against this country to our youth and our youth follows the nba they follow the nfl and i see nothing more but a generation that's going to follow these athletes and disrespect the flag and it's going to create a bigger problem what are your thoughts on that well I, you brought up a subject that I, I i know we don't have time in this interview but let's talk about what's happening in the black population in this country there there is a pressure by any person who's black who obviously has a, an extended black family, to be a Democrat liberal. Uh, if you are successful as a black person, you rise out of the hood or whatever it is, maybe you're born in the suburbs, but you're successful and you live what they call a white lifestyle, which is, in their words and saying that, they mean you make a lot of money and you're not being policed all the time because you live in a crime-ridden part of the inner city, then you're almost considered in the black community a traitor. There's a jealousy there, and that's a real shame. Uh, on the same front, there are some legitimate grievances that the black population has in, in regards to how they're treated by police, how they are profiled in some ways, and how society still has a cultural tone uh, to it. So there are some racists out there, but generally speaking, there is a generational poverty issue in the black community. Now, you project that to very rich, uh, uneducated, let's call them what they are, black uh, millionaire and multimillionaire NFL players, and they start to take action on a legitimate issue, but by finding the wrong villain, if you will, and the villain being, you know, the white population or uh, police in society or all of that. It's not any group's fault what's happened or happening in the black community. And we've got to have a better conversation about that. Conservatives have to do more uh, to, 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 to solve this issue. And, and, and if we, when we don't do much and don't recognize the differences in what they're crying out about, then what we get is an attack on our country as a whole. Let's throw the baby out with the bathwater becomes the mentality. And that is destroying our culture, and it's creating an even bigger racial divide. I think we're regressing in races, and that's what you're seeing playing out here. Now, I'm not justifying it, but we've got to help the black community deal with the grievances and help the culture deal with the grievances they're talking about so they'll stop projecting it on the wrong issues and, and making this, this cultural diatribe and discourse that's so destructive. Very well stated. Now I'm going to change to what's going on today, because I really want your opinion on this. We talked about this subject earlier with another guest. This mess, and that's what I think it is, between Roy uh, Moore and Doug Jones in Alabama for that Senate seat, and allegations of uh, impropriety on one side, and then a format and a platform of endorsing abortion and uh, Planned Parenthood on the other. What are your thoughts? thoughts about who the winner might be and really we're all going to be losers one way or the other well i don't know that we're all going to be losers because at the end of the day i have to reduce our politics down to what they've been for two or three decades it's become a game that generally is the lesser of two evils so certainly that's the case here evil number one being uh candidate jones the democrat who's going to vote lockstep with uh you know constitutionally destructive anti-American, non-patriotic, um, I think almost criminal policies 
that are that, that are just wrong for the human condition in America. So that's not moral for me to vote for a guy that I know is against everything I stand for in terms of policy and how that affects people. So if I'm an Alabama constituent can't vote for the Democrat. What's left? I'm going to write somebody's name in, pick a third party. I might as well throw my vote off of a bridge, you know, uh, be like tossing a bucket full of money off a bridge. It's a waste. And I, I know that people have opinions about that, but you got to vote for someone who has a chance. So we are left with Roy Moore. So I am, I'm, I presented a guy with 10 women or so who 40 years ago has said that he did some very inappropriate things that rise certainly to molestation or pedophilia. Uh, his word against theirs. He denies it. They say it's true. Um, I certainly believe in conspiracies. I'm not sure that's one of them. I suspect he did chase younger girls inappropriately and disgustingly 40 years ago. But I heard one Alabama voter put it, put it, uh, scary as this may be, uh, the most intelligently as I've heard. 40 years ago, mamas and daddies in Alabama might have been happy if the district attorney had pursued their 14, 15 year old daughter because it was not uncommon for older men to marry younger girls and it wasn't uncommon for uh, girls to get married at 14, 15, 16 years old. I, I'm not justifying anything in saying that. It was wrong then, it's wrong now, but I think the way we view it today is through our lens of today and not our lens of yesterday. I have no indication that Roy Moore has been a bad guy or anything but a Christian for the last two decades at least, okay? Now, to policies and statements, the things they're saying in defending themselves against anti-Semitic attacks, the, the whole abortion discussion, the way they've made that a central theme of the campaign, some of the other issues, I don't disagree with their positions, Roy Moore and his campaign, on those issues, but I think it is those issues that destruct and destroy the future and potential of bringing more people into the tent of the Republican Party or the conservative movement. It's sort of like trying to fight those battles, abortion as an example. We lost the battle. I don't believe in abortion, but I don't spend hardly a second talking about it on my radio show revealing my position because it's a dividing issue. It doesn't unite at all, and I don't like Republicans who go toward dividing issues, no matter how conservative they may be. He'll support Trump. I hope he wins. I think he will win. I wish there was a better choice, but there isn't. And that, sadly, has become politics in America for the past two decades. Why are we surprised? And then to wrap up this interview, I need to ask you about, of course, the noted statesman Dennis Rodman that has come out and said that he alone can solve the crisis between Kim Jong-un, North Korea, and the United States and Donald Trump. All they have to do is call him and he will lead us down the road to peace. What are your thoughts? I... I have jokingly agreed with that many times and given what i've seen of kim jong-un at the last 12 months I, I i think that sadly i say this in jest with a little bit of sarcasm but a but a, but a pound of truth too he might be right because how do you deal with a crazy loon pillsbury doughboy a you know, rocket man like kim jong-un how do you deal with it well you get somebody else just as crazy like trump or rodman to go in and try to address it and i think that it takes a crazy approach to do what a very presidential approach, a very professional approach that Obama, Bush, and Clinton, all of which have tried, their diplomats have tried, have made no progress at all with Kim Jong-un. So for everyone bashing anything Trump decides to try with Kim Jong-un, this is the D-Day. This is the, D -day. This is the decision. Like what, what Trump does or doesn't do with Kim Jong-un, nuclear war or lack thereof, is going to come back to bite us in the rear end in the next 10 or 20 years in a magnificent, shocking way. And so what at this point, it's, it's desperation. I think no diplomacy works unless China completely cuts them off, and they're not going to do that. So whatever they want to try, you got a relationship with Un. If you'll come to the table and talk to Dennis Rodman, I, 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 hate, to, I hate to sound so unserious as saying maybe it's worth a shot i want to say apology to you too i think earlier when i introduced you i said michael instead of brian i apologize i had a michael on earlier this morning and so thank you if you <laughs> accept my apology i'm sorry I, I made the executive decision to never i'm a radio guy i never i never show up the host so if the host wants to be humble that's fine i was only worried about getting in my website at the end that's that well, you know you uh, call me whatever as long as i can 
give you my opinion and promote my my brand. You go right ahead and promote it, and I do stand corrected, and I'm very humbly apologizing for saying the wrong name. Brian Crabtree, the publisher of Talk40.com. Anything else we need to know from you before we let you go this morning, Brian? I'm sure you, being in radio, would recognize that you and I both have been called much worse than Michael. More so than I care to remember. Thank you so much, and may I extend Christmas wishes to you and your family. God bless, and thanks for being on the show. Merry Christmas. Great to be with you. Thank you. Merry Christmas to Brian Crabtree, publisher of Talk40.com. And uh, I don't know why I said Michael earlier. I didn't mean to do that. I think I was referring to one of the wide receivers for the Oakland Raiders. Honestly, I'd read a story about him earlier this morning and saw the name Crabtree. And I know I'm making excuses, but I'm sorry I messed up his name. Brian Crabtree was our last guest. Thank you for being on the program. Oh, now that I've got all that and my boot out of my mouth, let's go ahead and have the weather forecast brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, Don Scarrow and the crew at 331 North Road, Jerome, the number 324-7657, or you can go to their website, scarrowsmeats.com. They are delicious, delicious meats like marinated prime rib and smoked hams, smoked turkey for all the Christmas gatherings, the family and everything. Oh, delicious. And the bratwurst and the breakfast sausages and the bacon, it's all there. All there at Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome, serving you. Right now, here's Scotty with the weather. Foggy, foggy, and then a little bit more fog. Good morning for your Seventh Ranch weather forecast. Scotty Cameron sitting in for Gina Jameson. Yes, that fog trend is going to continue. Looking for areas of freezing fog this morning. Highs around 34 tonight. Again, areas of freezing fog expecting a low of 17. Then for Wednesday, freezing fog again. Hazy in the afternoon expecting a high around 33. Then for Wednesday night, yep, again, I sound like a broken record. Areas of freezing fog expecting a low around 19 for Thursday. Freezing fog and haze in 38. Again, the same thing for Thursday night with a low of 23. That's your 7th Ranch weather forecast. Scotty Cameron sitting in for Gina James. Uh, thank you, Scotty. Doing a great job, too. Scarrow's Meats, Don Scarrow and his great, great staff. 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call, 324-7657. Oh, delicious meats. From Scarrow's Meats, changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. You know, earlier this morning, I had the occasion to say to a great group of people that have contributed so much to the economy of the state of Idaho, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from your lamb and wool growers in the Minicasha area, past and present. A lot of history, a lot of great names, a lot of people that have supported the wool industry here in the state of Idaho. Hardworking, dedicated, strong Idaho who have been a just major part of Idaho's history and are proud to be participating in Idaho's future. Idaho's lamb and wool growers, and especially right here in the Minicasha area, wishing you and yours a very Merry Christmas. All right, I got time for a call or two, and uh, then we're going to have to take off. I've got an appointment to get to, and I'm going to ask Wheels if he can play. Wheels, have you got a whole list of all the great Christmas music uh, songs over there? Well, I got quite the list, honestly. All right, now let me ask you this. Do you have... I'll Be Home for Christmas. That is one of my all-time favorite songs. Do you have that one available? Give your producer one second. (laughs) Okay. He's checking it out, checking the list, checking it twice. Okay. Do you want Neil Diamond or Bing Crosby? Uh, With I'll Be Home for Christmas? Yes, sir. Uh, Bing Crosby. I like the old music. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell everybody about our major sponsor, and then I'm going to let you play the whole version of I'll Be Home for Christmas, and I'm going to take off for that appointment. How does that sound to you? That sounds great. Uh, You chose a good one, by the way, because after that, I got White Christmas. There you go. There you go. 
There you go, buddy. All right, stand by. Don't forget, get ready for wintertime driving with absolutely the best people around. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. Oh, ho, ho, service the key word. They've got all the different tires for your winter driving on the snow, the ice, the yuck, the muck, and everything else. I'm telling you, for your car, your pickups, your SUVs, drive carefully with the best of snow tires and traction tires from your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. They've got all the tire chains. They've got the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, and batteries. Don't you overlook the importance of a good battery. Stop in and see today Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. Yep the best wishing you a very merry christmas your magic valley les schwab tire centers right now my favorite christmas song and wheels thank you very much we'll see you tomorrow morning at 806 god bless the way things were the way things ought to be